Well, folks, here we are, Weekend in the Rink on Rogers TV here at the Bayshore Community Center, J.D. MacArthur Arena. We got minor hockey again this afternoon, the Calvin Hawks against the Owen Sound Junior Attack. Junior Attack having a pretty good, decent season in Caledon uh, coming in here to see what they can do. Yeah, it looks, you know, this is, uh, we've had a chance, Gore, to do the U13 here a couple of times, and uh, it's always a good game every time we have a chance to watch them and call the game, and uh, a couple of kids that stand out on that team, and uh, yeah, they're 500 this year so far, uh, sitting right in the middle there by the looks of it, the Tri-County Minor Hockey League, uh, a couple more games to go before the Christmas break, um, so yeah, we'll see what they bring today. Wow. Looks like two fairly even teams. Um, well, there we go. There's the standings right there. They're they're both kind of that middle of the pack. And and when I was snooping around this morning, look at goals for and goals against and stuff like that. They uh, they're, they're both pretty much bang on each other. So we'll see uh, we'll see what gives today, either the offense or the defense. Well, you know, you can see where they are in the standings. And uh, uh, seven and seven isn't bad, being 50-50 on a, on a uh, in a season. But uh, there's always room for improvement. And of course. Uh, uh, James McGregor will tell you that. But as of late, they've been playing relatively well and yeah. starting to make some kind of move. No, exactly. Um, they had a good game last weekend when we were here. Um, you know, a couple of names that, uh, that stick out there, of course. the the Ben Warwick, number nine, had a good game last week. Um, goaltending, if I remember correctly, they had some uh, key saves last week when we were here. Um, and yeah, I'm sure James is hoping the, the team brings it again today. And, you know, that's what it is with uh, with minor hockey. And, and as a coach, you just want to see, you know, small improvements every game, every practice, work on certain things and, and then come to the next game and, and just show a little bit of improvement. And I think James would be happy that his group is doing that from what I see from up here. Well, I mean, as a, as a former coach, and that's so important. How do you convince kids that they – that with, with skill, uh, the limited skill because they're still improving and they're still doing yeah. How do you convince them to to buy into a program so that little things can be looked after? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, you need to be encouraging, um, you know, practices, games, uh, win or lose, up or down, um, and, and applaud them for every little thing that they do, you know, every little improvement that they show. And, and you never like to compare somebody to, you know, a, another player because sometimes that young player will see maybe some faults in the other player um, or think that maybe they can't be as good as that player. But I think just a positive encouragement, uh, spending some time with them during practice, maybe getting the, uh, the board out before a game or in between periods and showing them what you want them to do. And, and then when they come off the ice, you know, give them a little pat on the back. Every year in the, the, for minor hockey in, in Owen Sound or anywhere, you have a core group of players that always will make that team. And then you get a few add-ons. I know for a fact when you were coaching uh, your OMHA club uh, here that one year you had uh, like 14 kids and all of a sudden you add new kids to the mix. How does that, how does that affect the main group when you're getting somebody totally new or two people that are totally new you're dealing not only with new parents but your parents and all the rest of the stuff too yeah and that, and that can be tough um, you know kids when they get to minor peewee uh, coach is allowed to bring in three NRP players right somebody you know from outside so maybe somebody from Chats, Chatsworth or or maybe Port Elgin or something like that so these, it, it can be tough, right, because these kids have been together for five, six years or so. It's their friends. It's the people they go to school with. It's the kids they hang out with at the birthday parties. Um, you know, as a coach, you're trying to make the team better, right? You're trying to find maybe some chemistry. And, um, you know, I, I've always believed that, uh, you know, there's always a way to make a team better whether it's somebody skates faster, whether somebody is better with the systems you want to put in, um, whether somebody's more attentive um, and focuses a little bit more during it, whatever. But, um, and that can be tough for the kids. You know, they look across the dressing room and, and there's three new faces over there that they don't know, right? You know, maybe kids that they've never crossed paths with or played against. And, and it's, you just got to, got to, you know, talk about the team game, right? And, and you're trying to make not only the team better, but uh, each person a little bit better with the people that you bring in. I know that you, the, with, with players and, and, you, and you, you, like you just basically said, to make the team better. What I don't understand is the fact is, is that um, why the need for organizations such as Owen Sounds to bring in a player from, from, uh, from, from Shallow Lake or Port Alga. To me, you know, uh, uh, I paid the same dollar for my kid to play hockey, and now you're bringing in somebody to take my kid's place who's... You know, just a tiny bit different than what no. 
And uh, how do you justify that? Uh, whereas this is own sound. This is not Shallow Lake. Let them play in Shallow Lake. Yeah, it's uh, boy, give me the tough questions today here. <laughs> uh, but you know what? It, it it's part of hockey, and I think the key for everybody to understand is it's not just uh, the NRP rule doesn't apply just to own sound. Right, it applies in, yes. in every center that these teams go to, right? So if you want to compete, and that's the other thing. You're trying to find that balance where um, you're trying to develop the kids, right? You're, it's life skills. It's, it's hockey. It's, it's off ice. It's, you know, making them, hope, hoping they're going to be a better person, right? And, and developing them within the game. Um, and they pay a lot of money. They pay a lot of money, yes. right? They spend a lot of time. They dedicate a lot of time. I know that when, when we had, as an example, the, the Major Adam group that we had, um, when we won the OMHA championship there a few years ago, we, had, uh, we played 76 hockey games and had 72 practices. That's a lot of hotels. That's a lot of car time, a lot of bus time, a lot of rink time, right? And, and um, so you got to try and find that balance, right? Because if, if you're not adding three players or two players and making your team better, it will make for a long season when you're going to the Oakvilles, uh, the Burlingtons, Woolwich, right? Because all those teams, that's what they've done. That's what they've done. They've had tryouts. You know, they've had to cut 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 people. And they're, they're taking on two or three NRPs to make their team better. I just find it, 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 it difficult to, to rationally to figure if your kid has played in a program for so often and all of a sudden gets displaced with somebody from somebody else. The justification that, that, that is it win at all costs or, or whatever. And I know I, I'm... You know, I'm playing the devil's advocate yep, here. No, no, right that's fine. Uh, and, uh, but a as a parent, I think I would be really ticked off at, at, at whatever organization had done that. And I know, you know, you always want to be better, at you, but at what expense is, is I guess, the question I'm asking. Yep. And, and I think, I, I don't want to say it was easier, because that's, uh, that's maybe not the right word. Uh, back in the day, at least there was a, an AE program, an additional entry program, yes. where somebody got to play some rep hockey. Now it normally meant you played in the Georgian Bay Loop, right, throughout the season. And then you would, you know, Owen Sound was an AE2 center, so you would, you would go and play some playdowns against other centers who had an AE2 ranking. Um, but yeah, it's now it's um, it's local league, you know, and the well it used to be just house league after the below the AE. Now it's local league, which is good. The kids get to wear the attack jersey. They get to travel to different centers. You know, they're King Carden, they're up on the peninsula. Uh, I'm not too sure how far east they go, but I understand, right? You know, there's yeah, you get two or three upset parents because you know, you know, you coach, you know, you've. You've cut my child, you know, you've, yeah. you've released him and now he's not going to be with his friends. It, it is tough to find that balance because at the same time, there's 17 other parents, right, who are, are putting the money forward, uh, committing all that time. Um, and, and they want to see that balance where not only are their kids developing, but, but they want to win. And, and I know what they say, you know, you know, well, it's not all about winning and stuff like that. I understand. Um, but the you know, bottom we, line we is keep, we keep winning. We keep score. Yeah. Uh, we keep stats. Um, <laughs> you know, and and there's tournaments, there's playoffs, and there's OMHA playdowns. And if you're lucky, you get to go to an OHF. That's what that's what parents and kids, when they sign up for rep hockey, that's what they're looking to do. They're looking to win an OMHA championship and get to go to an OHF if you're a, a major-aged player. Wow. It's a, it's, it's a multifaceted uh, process uh, for a bit. Um, and, and and thank you for. I know I put you on the spot today. No, you no problem. What's coming? Uh, I got put on the spot every 365 days <laughs> uh, during tryouts and after tryouts. Right, that was all. You ask any coach. Um, those three or four skates, right? And and you you have your 17 uh, player cards that you get to sign, and you're looking out there your tryouts, and you've got 30, 35, 40 kids out there. Right, you're gonna you're gonna break some hearts, and that was. I don't care who you are. Whatever coach you are, um, that's the toughest week or ten days of a season, hands down. Well, I've never had that that, that problem. I've cut kids. Most of my coaching career in hockey has been in in uh, in uh, house league, which is a little bit different. You get the kids who get all the play. That was my philosophy. Every kid played. Didn't matter what what time it was. But I mean, I know that the the rules change and the game changes. But part of it to me was 
What's the explanation when you have to, when, when, when the kid is a citizen and a long-time payer, uh, why you have to bring in an import? And, and, and the insight has been excellent. I thought you answered it very, very, very well. And, uh, uh, and the bottom line still is it's still a tough job to do, and, it, and it's tough because you're dealing with kids and you're dealing with fragile egos. And the psychology behind it becomes totally different, too. And to be in that situation, I bet you, Buck, you've lost some sleep or something. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, you certainly do uh, lose some sleep. Like I say, those 10, 11 days for tryouts. And, and I understand, right? I mean, it's, you know, because, you know, Shallow Lake, Sogging Shores, they don't want to lose their best player yes. at whatever age level is, right? Because right? it, it, ha it has an impact on that center as well. And, and it, it has an impact, you know, right, right across the board. Right across the board for sure but um ultimately every center does it they have nrps um you want to compete it's a lot like i say a lot of time a lot of money and uh, there's nothing worse than hopping on a bus you know and going down to oakville on a sunday afternoon right and you know a center like oakville has probably had to cut at their a level they probably had to cut 60 70 80 kids right so you know they're putting a good team on the ice well yes and that's true and uh uh, you've been very fortunate in, in your coaching career in this town to have a really, really, really good team. Very. But most of the kids have been local. Having them too many coming in from somewhere else. So. Absolutely. The, the, I refer back to when the OMHA Championship 2019, right? That was a major Adam team. That was strictly Owen Sound kids. Great group. Um, body into the system. Like I say, 76 games. And, um, and we were fortunate with the Georgian Bay League, won Georgian Bay. Uh, regular season, won the playoffs, and then rolled through the OMHAs well, and were fortunate enough to go to yeah. HFs. And that was all on Sound Kids, right? And, and people asked me the next year, we made some changes. Why on earth would you make some changes? You know, you've, you've got a good team. You just won OMHAs. You went to the OHF. But right, there, there's always something you got to do to make your team better. Because once again, the other 12 centers, they're trying to make their teams better. But it's kind of, yeah, and it's, uh, you know, I, I, I got nothing more to add <laughs> yeah. because basically you've covered all the, all the bases on that. And then uh, minor hockey is probably, own some minor hockey group is probably one of the best in the province. And, uh, and I've, I've had, uh, you know, I've always had questions about, Triple A coming out of this area and and taking players out of Owen Sound. I know Triple A's taken a couple of really good ones. Uh, this U13 team is a good example, yeah. right? Quite a few kids uh, down the line playing at yeah. the Highlanders. Yeah, and uh, in some ways, yeah, sure, you want competition, you want. But my 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 thought process, and I I I don't think I'm wrong. If you're a good player, they'll, they'll find, find you. you. Yeah, you're playing A, Double A, Triple A, and yeah. and uh, um, perfect example. Uh, uh, it's, you know, some of the organizations, you know, and you get it up into junior A hockey, they, they know, the scouts have seen you, they've known where you play, um, they know the, play, the coaches, the general managers, they get together, uh, they know the minor hockey groups, and then if you're good, and you can, you know, there's all kinds of criteria how you can make it to that <laughs> level, and and they'll find you. So they they will find you, absolutely. So I don't, to me, I, and this is just a personal bias, I don't think you have to play AAA to be noticed. And I would rather, you know. Yeah, there's some good hockey. I mean, there's Owen Sound, as you mentioned, it has a good center, um, good executive. Um, you know, they do a good job. I, I, was, I spent time on that executive. I know how hard they work. Oh. Uh, I know the long hours they put in and, and uh, how committed they all are. And, and yeah, it's a, it's a good minor hockey system. And, well, um, most... and some good players have come out of the Owen oh. South minor hockey oh. system, oh. right? So whether it's, you know, to move on to play junior, university hockey, or even in the pros, yeah, right? So well, uh, they're doing something right. Well, they are. And, and uh, f the other side of it is, too, is uh, on behalf of Rogers TV and probably part of the community and being a parent, uh, the, the volunteer at l hours that are spent by not just the coaches and the trainers, and but the parents behind the scene, the organization of tournaments and stuff like that. We're, we're very, very grateful and very, very thankful. And kudos to Owen Sound Minor Hockey for then thank you volunteers and coaches and referees who uh, I know they get a little bit of cash for doing those <laughs> games, but without the referees, we, we don't have hockey. So uh, you could not pay me enough to be a referee. I don't minor hockey. You could not pay me enough. And who boy, I, I know they're hurting for guys. <laughs> Gord, we talked about it last week, and uh, you know I've had you know a couple people, uh, Wayne Thompson and. Jason Murner, you know, say, hey, you're not coaching. Why don't you come out and referee? Not happening. 
<laughs> so the kids would probably skate twice as fast as me anyways, but um, it, uh, it, that's a thankless job. I know they're being paid, like you mentioned, yeah. but uh, it's a t- and, you know, and, they're, and they're hurting. If there is anybody out there that's interested, in, and we threw this out there last week as well, anybody that's out there interested in, in becoming a referee, whatever level, minor hockey, I, I think you can reach out to Danny Blackburn or, or somebody yes. locally, and, and yes. they'll get you involved because we've, we've, we've had games canceled yes. this year because they, they couldn't get enough referees. I know the first weekend you and I were to do weekend at the rink, it was supposed to be three games. Yeah, we did two. And we could only do two. The third one, they had to cancel it. Yeah, so kids are missing out, and, and I, I like to think they eventually got that game rescheduled, but yeah. That's tough. Well, hockey, uh, you can't do it without those officials. And uh, uh, folks and parents, you know, it's a game's judgmental, and it happens very, very quickly on the ice. These guys got to make a decision. So my question to you is, if you're not going to be out there doing it, don't be criticizing the guys <laughs> no, exactly. that, that are doing it. So uh, uh, they're not as question a statement. So basically, uh, uh, uh we got some hockey to play this afternoon. Of course, it's the Youngstown Junior Attack uh, 13. That's under 13, which is, uh, and the other team is from Caledon, and they've got a host of players that we, you know, they look like they're a teaser at the back of the bottom of they've the list. They've got a that, huge so. lineup card here yeah, in front of so. us. So we'll have to figure out who's playing and who's not. And and if we miss somebody, and then uh, we apologize up front. Well, tonight, folks, we got, uh, just before we get started, don't forget on Rogers TV, the junior attack are playing starting at 7.30, and uh, the crew will be here to, to bring you all the action and uh, here on Rogers TV. So, so, last game before Christmas, I think, for the attack. I think so. I think yeah. so. So, yeah, get out and watch some great junior hockey. Well, that's, they've been struggling over the last little while, but hopefully they'll get the... the the legs under them tonight and get things going and get things organized and uh, probably have a Christmas present under the tree. I think they'll, uh, yeah, they are struggling, Gord. You're right. Um, injuries. They seem to have some injuries. They got a bunch of guys back last night, but I think two more guys joined the uh, the injury list. So once they get healthy, we got some, we'll got some. we see some great playoff hockey here at Owens Sound. Well, I think so. There's no doubt they're going to make the playoffs. It's just a matter of right now all kinds of teams are jockeying for position, and Owens Sound's dropped out of first place, sitting down around third in the division. But generally, London's been moving on. and uh, The getting, West is tight. It's, yeah, so yep. it's, it's anybody has a couple of bad days in a row. Unfortunately, the attack have lost about four in a row, so they've got to start to get that ship righted and, yeah. uh, and get it into the wind properly so that they can... Uh, uh, motor on the new year, but of course, January is different too. It's exactly. It's, uh, they, they've been feeling each other out for a while, and you can it's, see uh, Saginaw's right up front, which surprises me more than anything, yeah. but you see the London Knights have now jumped to the... Uh, and a tough Windsor team in town tonight. So you see Owen Sound is now down around fifth place overall, but second, I think, in their division. So uh, Kitchener made some big moves over the last two weeks. Uh, grabbing, I think, I can't remember who they grabbed, but they grabbed somebody. I think the uh, top goal scorer in the OHL. I can't think of his name, but they're, everybody, it's tight. I think everybody in the West thinks they have a chance. Well, Guelph, uh, you know, you look at, I mean, Grenchard there's 20 points between first and and, uh, er, and and eight and ninth. But look at the between between fourth place and ninth place, yep. and it's not hard to jump that. And you know what? You pointed out Guelph there, Gord. That's, you know, hey, I'm just a guy in the stands, ready to see his ticket holder. But uh, that's what's hurt the uh, the attack right there. I think they lost four in a row, one or two of them in overtime. But still, you you, you gave up eight points there uh, to Guelph. So, anyways, but once again, I'm not uh, I'm just the guy up in the stands. Well, so am I. But uh, but the problem is, is that you and I both have <laughs> opinions of what <laughs> should yes. be done, but we're not going to necessarily say it. So. Of course, uh, Owen Sound Junior Attack, uh, under 13 team be to our left in their home white jerseys with, with black and red trim. And, of course, uh, Caledon in their dark jerseys. I believe that's black. It's, uh, uh, since uh, blues, blacks, and dark greens, I can't tell the difference. So, uh, yeah, But I assume it's black with red trim and white. Uh, you are uh, correct. I'm sorry. I have a little bit of minor color. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. 
Teams are going to line up and shake hands. Have you gone back to that? or uh... this, yeah, that, was, that was confusing last weekend, wasn't it? Both yeah. games that we did, it's like, do we, don't we, Should are we, we not supposed to, should we? But it looks like, yeah, it looks like today they're back at it. Maybe this is uh, I wonder if there was Merry Christmas or I something. I wonder if there was an incident. <laughs> no, you tell me they're going to win a <laughs> Merry Christmas through that line? <laughs> no, I don't think that's happening. <laughs> uh, kids are uh, kids that are probably, they're probably not as bad as some of the older kids, but uh, starting goaltender looks to me as Paul McKenna. Starting goaltender number 31 is Christopher Galiz, and uh, one of the things we had last year was uh, last week was one goaltender, and uh, appears that uh, Calvin has come in with one. Face off, here they are. Rate start this game right off the bat. Norton has it. Comes back over the blue line, passes it off to Harris. Harrow. We should mark that back down. Harrow, that's we, right. We did that last week as well, didn't yeah, we? Exactly. And we say his name a lot during these games, so we'll see what he brings today. True enough. Friday's wrapped that puck around the net. Good scoring chance, but just couldn't get the puck. Finally cleared out down the ice. Gonna have to catch number seven's number for a name on the back of his jersey. We don't have that on the list, so. Oh, boy. For, for uh... For Khaled in there, yeah, I cannot yeah. read that. That's it's actually kind of tough to read those red names on the back of those black jerseys, but we'll keep an eye out for him here when he comes back on the ice. Greg McGregor takes the face off. Puck goes off into the corner, coming along the wall. Chasing after Warwick. Out come the Khaled, and of course, that's big number 76 being and he comes down the right wing, and then nice defensive play. As Tyson Guess gets the puck and then just starts right back up the ice. Good wheels. Guess has it coming in on Gasp. Coming in on goal. Crowns up the fence a little bit. Backhand off the side of the net. And it, so he ended up that way too. That was a great rush by Gas up the ice. Chain down the ice is De Silva. De Silva has a chance. A little backhand shot. And then McKenna just manages to follow it over and knock it away into the corner. Back to another long shot. Coming off the point by Spina. Junior attack have the puck to pass it up along the boards through a maze of players. And Warwick heads to the bench, chasing it down is Ford. Ford up along the boards. Big number 87, of course, that's DeGuglio. There's a oh, good stop. Nice pass. Christopher Galiz comes up big as he just sprawls across the front of that net. Stopping Alex Jarman, who was right on the doorstep. Good scoring opportunity for the, the attack. McGregor again at center. Puck goes in behind the net. Attack on it right off the back. Out into the slot. And that was Harrell. He couldn't get a chance in it again. <laughs> Kalees had saved their bacon both times. <laughs> and the, the good puck, pressure by the attack. Puck's in the net there, but uh, no goal. Referee waved that off. Don't know what happened there. Maybe it was after the whistle. Well, they didn't protest too much, so... Uh, Obviously, he made the save. There's a deflection in front. Oh. By Barber. Good stop again by Galiz, and he certainly has been the point right now. Barber takes it off into the corner. Barber having trouble controlling it, ends up along the boards and racing off the benches. McGlynn to get to the point. Norton, he tries to dig it out a little off. Well, somebody got hit down there, and that hurt. Still on the ice. Barber in behind the goal, trying to get it. The Callanan players trying to get off the ice, but he's pretty slow, so. Backhand pass. 
through center. Comes to Silva, and De Silva gets checked at the blue line, taking it away by Gas. And then losing his footing is McGregor. Valve. Valve comes across, down the left wing, tries to center it out front, nice centering pass, and I believe Alex Jarman got lifted the stick of the forward. Warwick down the left wing, tried to slide it through the defense, couldn't get it there. Good play. Made by Val, it's ready to stop Warwick as he was going down that right, that right left wing. Hornick has it in behind the net. Hornick stops, turns, just gets it up along the boards. Val, at the blue line, is going to get the shot blocked by Hornick. Puck is up to Hornick. Little move off the boards. Down the right, down the left wing. Tried to center it out in front. Ends up going in behind the net. J.C. Warwick. He has it, and he gets knocked down. Puck comes back to the blue line. Shot off a leg by Shannon. And then clear down the ice, and we'll get an icing call on this, and they're going to change them all up. Well, number seven there, I was able to read the jersey, but this is going to make it even more confusing, Gord, because number seven says Santa Cruz on the back of his jersey, and there's already two Santa Cruz players, number 88 and 88. So one of them, considering that number's duplicated there, I'm guessing... Just don't know which one if it's uh, which one of the Santa Cruz players it is. Unless there's four, of the, three of them. Well, there, and there could be, who knows? So, could be a set of twins and a, and a cousin or something. Or. In behind the net, picked up by French. French centered it, barely got it through. It was off the stick of Norton, right in the slot area. Then Barber, down the left wing. One to beat off a skate, get, tries to set it through. Tried to back pass, it couldn't get there. Picked up by Nolan, and Nolan try, can't get it out yet. Nice pass up to Santa Cruz. Cruz has got some wheels. He gets by the D. Oh, oh. that back pass. Nice move. Too, got too close, put it off the side of the net. Puck is going to go down the ice where they'll get there in time. It's going to be icing. And they would blow it down. It's a good scoring opportunity there. Just looks like he just ran himself out of room there on that short side. Well, yeah, I, I think that's exactly what happened. But uh, trying to get back and back check, you're going to see it here. Gas was right there. Give him a little stick. And oh. then, ah, oh, hooked on the stick. Gas made a really good play. <laughs> well, nice to see that in replay because I sure didn't see I didn't that see in real that time. Not quite often. We'll get you two minutes. Yeah, I'll be very but, uh, true. Very true. Real, real. In behind the net, on the on the puck is De Silva. De Silva tries to get it free. There's a back pass right out in front. Coming out to Ford. Ford takes a shot off a of body in front. Then McKenna makes the stop. Well, that's the best scoring opportunity that uh, that Kaladins have as they've not played very often much in that end of the ice surface. There's a shot blocked by Hornick. Hornick down the left wing. Hornick being bothered by Ford. In front, there's a backhand. A beautiful pass and not being able to finish it off was Ben Warwick. Chasing up ice again is De Silva. De Silva still on it. Spina. He got it inside, not blocked at the blue line as Riolo Ri Ri had a chance. I think that. Now we're getting yeah. an offside call. I was going to say that's offside. Yeah, he just he just missed putting his arm up there, but that certainly was offside. It's being a heading to the bench, as you see in our picture, and uh, Santa Cruz is at center. Puck goes off into the corner, gas, chasing it down. Cruz, Santa Cruz has it. Comes off the wall, nice lead pass. Up to Barber, Barber coming in over the blue line, got a man, tried to get it to him. And Sam Harrow had a chance and knocked into the corner by Galiz. Little pass off by Racine. Then they just drive it in and that's Santa Cruz. On it quickly on the far side is Jason White. White 
Dumps it off into the corner. Gas after it. Gas makes a nice little move. This guy can handle the puck, but he got it. It's going to get a penalty there's, on it. Look at the that, hook. There's that hook. We, we spent some time talking about that last week, Gord, right? That the, the stick in the hands, you know, or trying to lift the stick and getting up in the hands and penalty, no penalty, because like, like we pointed out there in that scoring opportunity, right? I think the stick was up in the hands, no call, but that looked like the exact same play there, unless I missed something. Jackson Racine heading in there for, for, for hooking. Power play, Shannon. Dumps it back into Norton. Norton digs on it, gets after Barber in behind the net. On it is Harrell. Harrell back in to Barber. Puck goes into it. There's the shot. Nice backhand by Harrell. But good work in the corner on the right hand side to dig that puck and he got it back out in front. And boy, they didn't make that was a nice backhand shot. Great play. You're going to see it on Rogers' replay right now. You're going to see the hard work by Barber in the corner. Harrell's out in front, gets the rebound, and then puts it away. And uh, each week we seem to be talking about those two. They work well together, Barber and Harrell. What's starting to happen is they're starting to get scoring out of their second group rather than just out of the first group, which is Hornick and uh, Warwick. In behind the net, chasing after that is Shannon. Shannon dumps it out along the wall. Trying to get it by the D and couldn't. Shannon again has it. A little back pass up on the far side. Got it up to Hornick. Hornick goes down the left wing, just dumps it off into the corner, chasing after it. Is McGregor. McGregor can't get a hold of it. And finally, Caledon does, and they bring it out. one nothing here just with eight minutes, with two minutes remaining in the period. In behind the goal, chasing after it is Ben Warwick. Warwick. Puck made a funny bounce coming out of the zone. Here comes Warwick down the right wing. Warwick gets him out, being checked by Preventus. And he couldn't get it towards the net. At the blue line, Shannon. Or McGlynn, pardon me. Puck is dumped right back in the zone. Barber for checking. Good work by Barber on that last goal. Back pass and went through the goals. And, and uh, Galiz gets a hold of it and puts a big mid on it. And 128 remaining here in the first period has been fairly, uh, fairly active period. Barber at center. Wins the draw and then knocks it off to the boards. The attack on it again. There's a shot. Knock, the lead just knock it off into the corner. Puck being out into the slot area. Here they come two on one if they can get her going, but they can't. Because DeGuilo couldn't do it. DeGuilo, pardon me. Barber gets the puck down the right wing. Tried to get a nice defensive play by the defenseman from, I believe that was number 15, Riolo. Spina has a puck and he just dumps it in and waits that everybody clears off. The Julio at the blue line fired in was French. And then driven around the far side, and the Hornet's going to go try and get it out. Can't get it out. And little stick check didn't happen. Barber. Puck goes right to the goal, and uh, McKenna's not going to make any mistake on that. Well. Gets the face off with 19 seconds remaining in the first period. Well, if I had that, you know, my, in my humble opinion, I think oh, the territorially, the own sound has been in the Caledon and a lot more than Caledon has been in theirs. No, I agree. A few more scoring chances uh, uh, down there. Long shot off a leg and back into the goal crease, picked up by Warwick. Warwick, he gets it knocked off the stick. Gas gets back in behind it, can't get to the puck. Warwick picks it up again. Little back pass off the boards. And get it out to the blue line, and there goes the horn. As Valve just keeps the puck inside the zone, but the horn goes. The Own Sound Junior attack, uh, full marks this first period. They should have had a few more goals. 
I think, on my <laughs> junior tack, only coming up with one, but Christopher Galiz for for Callan came up big a couple of times in that period. So. Yeah, no, I agree. They did have some chances down there, moved the puck around a little bit. Uh, so even throwing the puck out front there a few times, and they were rewarded the one time. Uh, we'll see what the second period brings here. one nothing tight game. I mentioned earlier about both these teams seem to be fairly similar when it comes to goals for and goals against. Um, we've got a tight one here so far. Well, uh, own sound at 500 and uh, it'd be nice to get this win in the bag and uh, take it home in the bag and wrap it up for Christmas. I don't know what their schedule is over the Christmas holiday, but if it's minor hockey, it's full. There'll <laughs> 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 be a tournament or two involved there too during Christmas week, so. Santa Cruz. White along the boards, he can't control it. Heading in behind the net on top of that is McGlynn, and McGlynn just back passes it up the board, back onto the other side, chasing after his Racine. Racine can't control it, and, and Warwick gets it past the D. It could be a two on one or three. There it is, right at the, they're off the, off the iron as Hornick had that chance on a beautiful play by Warwick. Got him the puck. But he was looking, and that's he had his head up, and unfortunately he missed that 20 score four square feet. So you can hear that post all the way up here. Oh gosh, I hated that sound. <laughs> right through center, checking up Santa that's... Cruz. White can't control the puck. It's coming back as Warwick makes the oh. guy. nice play to fork check. Back outside. Here comes here comes Warwick through center. Morning, heading to the bet. Nice play to get around the D. Gets a shot, and I'm not sure where it went. Up and over the net there. I thought it was the goaltender. Had a piece of it or something, but I couldn't even follow the puck at that time. Back out to the blue line, Jart. There's the shot deflected off into the corners. Barber come right out in front. And it hit him as he was coming through the slot area. Harrell. To Barber. Barber goes behind the note, getting bothered. He passes it back to himself almost. And McGlynn couldn't keep it in. Looks like it's going to be a shot on goal. <laughs> Got to be careful with that. Barber just at the blue line, passes it through center. Tried to get it up to Harrow. Harrow couldn't control it. Norton has it. Norton comes into the slot and he gets the stick whacked and it goes off. Hit, and then he finally dumps it back into the corner, in behind the net, trying to twist it out in front. Here's Barber. <laughs> well, I'll yeah. tell you, that <laughs> that was an interesting. <laughs> no body contact, no hooking, no tripping, but it was one of the three to me. So anyway, been let go, and we're right back on Spina has it. Going down the right wing, Spina back passes. Oh, nice interception by Hornick as he's got into the lane and took it away. And then Hornick comes straight up the ice, but couldn't control the, as it got away. Hornick has it again. Good shift by him at both ends of the ice. Warwick corrals it in behind the goal, trying to set it up, center it, and then it gets knocked off the stick. Gas doing yeoman service to keep it in. Does. Gas is going to Warwick. Ben Warwick digging in the corner for can't come up with it. And then Norton has it in behind the net. Or McGregor, pardon me, McGregor digging for it. Comes up with it again, passes it back out. There's a shot off a leg in front. It's that pass by Hornick, got out in front. Gas has it, slices it back a bit in behind the goal and it's picked up by Callinan. Couldn't keep it in. Was David Bedford as it just got outside the line and we get a stop and play and take a look at the bench and the brain trust uh, of the own sound junior of course led by James McGregor. So it's good giving the kids feedback every time after they come over off the ice over there. And I'm sure Simon Hornick getting a nice pat on the back for breaking up that two on one as well. Well, wow. did a nice job. French. In his zone, loses the pass. 
And I believe that was Cade Norton that ended up flat on his stomach as he tried to direct that puck towards the goal. Caledon having trouble getting out of their zone. There's a good solid body check. I didn't think there was any hitting <laughs> in this division, but that was a good shoulder. Took him off the puck. McGlynn knocks it back along the boards. Heading in by, behind the net, Jacob French, and French got it up the wall to Santa Cruz. In behind the net, chasing after his valve. Valve gets a little back pass off the board, doesn't go anywhere. It's DeGulio who couldn't hand it. Finally, DeGulio has it. Harrell. That's hit by a high stick, but I guess it wasn't. Looked like it from up here, because we're, we're a fair distance away, so. Barber chasing after the loose puck. Along with Jacob French. French is on him right away. Barber, nice move. Try to bring it out in front. Good pass into the slot. Nobody there. There's a shot off a leg, and it's blocked by Racine. And he's heading to the bench, because I think that I hurt. I think he felt that. Oh, I think so. <laughs> Hornick. Along the boards, Hornick tries to get it out front, goes off a leg. Is it? There it is in the goal crease and a big meeting. And, and again, Galee's coming up big. And Owen Sound scratching their heads, wondering why they can't beat this kid. Yeah, yeah, it was a couple nice saves there, held on to the rebound. Nice play. I'm not too sure who that was for Owen Sound down below the goal line. Saw an opportunity to step out in front of the net and try and bang that home. You're going to see it on the Rogers yeah. replay now. Number 10, Keegan McGregor. It's a oh. nice play. You see an opportunity like that, you can come out. He's on his forehand there, an opportunity to put the puck in the net. And, and uh, Callaghan goaltender made a couple of good saves. Puck goes back into the corner. Warnig on it. Can't keep it. Warwick, pardon me. Where we go back in, couldn't get the puck as it was. Now we're getting slashing call. And I believe it's going to Kaladin. Number 76, and that's Michael Spina heading to the box. I didn't see what happened there for a second. I thought that was going against Old Sound. Well, it was back behind the play, and it was po pointed out on the left. So where we were looking at the, where the puck was, uh, because I didn't see what the reason for the call in the play was at all, other than the fact that when the whistle went, I saw the referee pointing at a, the area approximately where it was. Chasing after, because that's Keegan McGregor. McGregor. There's a shot off a of leg. Could possibly be a break here. Down the wing is De Silva. De Silva into the slot, takes the shot, and no problem for McKenna. As he steers that off into the corner. Puck comes up this side on the left wing. Remember, the attacker on a power play. And it's the second power play they've had. Warwick. Warwick protecting the puck, but couldn't get through to the goal. Twists and turns in that corner. Got a point, good shot. Gets it back out to gas. On this side to McGlynn. McGlynn takes the shot. Oh, that was close. Just missed the post on the far side. In behind the goal is McGlynn. McGlynn has it. He's, he just dumps it along the boards. Not enough mustard on that. But finally picking it up is Barber. Barber has got some moves off a leg. Barber again gets a chance. Oh. Loose puck. It's a good stop by Galiz. Actually, just a great save. That was a good hard shot. Good save. Loose puck in front, and finally Galiz, who gets hammered by his own guy. And we're going to get a little bit of... Uh, I think his own guy did hit him there. Oh, no, I think so, too. Bit he a, uh, a bit of a roll across the ice there. You know, here's you're going to see. This was a great play Thanks. because there's the shot. He makes a good stop. And then you see the rebound come back out. And just as... Coming around behind the net, <laughs> we didn't see the 
the hammer in front, oh. but uh, see who fell on him. But uh, that's okay anyway. I think the coach has given the referee an earful over there about uh, he's wondering about his goalie getting hurt. But uh, I, I could be wrong, but I think when the coach gets a chance to watch the replay of this game, he'll see that uh, he'll see that it was his, his own player, player that fell on the goalie. Yeah. That's, uh, I think the coach could possibly be getting the uh, hey one more and you might be out of here. Oh, I could be wrong. I could be talking about Windsor versus the Owen Sound attack tonight. Oh, or buying a ticket for the Christmas benefit. <laughs> <laughs> There's a shot. I think that was on goal, and Galiz again coming up big. Gas has it. Gas gets it back to Harbor. There's the shot. Score! From the point, Sam Harrell. And I don't think anybody touched it on the I way in. And if they did, it was a... I think it took a little bit of a bounce and went between the goalie's legs, scored. Oh. But it never hurts to get the puck to no, the no. So many times you see them block, but, you know. Put the puck on the net. Let's see here. One of my, my philosophies is that shoot. If the guy wants to get in front of it, you know, there's the shot right from the point. Just out of the frame there. I don't know if you have somebody. No, it went that, all the way in. It was Harold's still. goal. Nice 2 nothing goal. Power play goal. Yep. 2 nothing. Halfway through the second period. And full marks for the attack as they've been all over Caledon for most of the period. And, not, and that's not anything to take away at any from Caledon. But they played a lot in the Caledon zone. Up along the boards is Warwick. Warwick gets it by two men being chased down by Preventus, and Preventus can't control it. Hornig in behind the net. He can't control it. Finally, the puck ends up on Key McGregor's stick. Nice little breakout pass along. Two on one. Right in on goal. There's the shot. Can't beat that one. Santa Beautiful Cruz. goal. That's number seven, Santa Cruz. That was a nice goal. Move the goalie across the net, back over to your forehand, and tuck it in the open net. He also used the uh, other the forward on the right, number eight, uh, White, as the decoy. Yeah, nice play. And, of course, the goaltender had to keep an eye on that. And uh, But McKenna... Can't, can't always stop those things. That was a great shot. Let's see what that does to Caledon now that they've got themselves a goal. Barber reading on goal. Shoots gun to the crossbar. Goal. Barber, what a beautiful place. He picked that puck up right at the red line. Got in, beat his man, and then got in and just let her fly. But I'll tell you, another quarter of an inch, that thing would have been off the iron and up into the stands. And just like that, restore the two-goal lead. You'll see the play here. And that was Sam Harrow that uh, nice knocked, shot, not locked the, knocked the puck away, got it up to, to that young man, and he didn't make any, any bones about putting it away. And, of course, that's Barber, Griffin Barber. 3-1 right now for the attack here in the second period at the Lumley Bayshore Community Center. And for those folks that are streaming down southern, uh, a little bit southern Ontario, uh, hello. Hope you're enjoying the game. And thanks for watching, too. We found out that they stream, and we didn't even know that. Yeah. So, <laughs> actually, earlier in the season, we did. So, it's kind of cool. Norton chasing after on this side, kept in along. Really, Riolo. And, of course, this game is also live in Owen Sound. So, folks, if you're watching, thanks so much. In behind the net, McKenna just stops the puck, stops, and, and then Gas is on it. See what Gas does with this kid can skate. Nice lead pass up to Barber, and Barber couldn't control it as it went off the stick and then escaped. Puck is along the boards. Back out front by Santa Cruz. And Mateo Santa Cruz could not control the puck. Here comes Harbor in on goal, couldn't. Loose puck got away from him. There's Barber again, and that did quite have himself set to get that away, and it went wide. Ah, oh, deflected. Oh. That was 
Riolo had a chance in front, to, and what he does, he deflects it off into the corner. Digging for that puck along the board, just one of the, there's a shot, and Galese makes the save. You look at those goals, that uh, that last goal that was scored, that's all Galese gave him, was that up, upstairs. Yeah. He didn't give him anything else, and he put it up, and was under the crossbar, and Fantastic shot. And, and yeah, yeah, and you couldn't do anything about that. You can't take anything away from the goaltender either. He played that as well as he could. But when you see shots like that at this level, that's really, really something. Callan can't get it out. Stolen by, by McGregor. Then Hornick couldn't handle the puck as it was off a stick and then down the ice. Chasing after it. Shannon, and they're going to have an icing call. 4.07 remaining in the second period. 3-1 on sound over Caledon. And like you said, these teams are too equally matched. And and uh, can be anybody's game. That was a beautiful goal scored by, by Caledon. Yeah, they've had a couple chances here. They're only down two. It looks like they got uh, some players on the team that can put the puck in the net. They're not out of this game at all. Only down wow. two goals. Along the boards. Got it up to Spina. Spina's down the left wing. Spina's going to take a shot. Just he whistled that wide. Got to put the puck on the net. That's the only how you're going to score goals. At the blue line. Chasing around the valve. He gets it inside. There's a loose puck and off the stick. Of a Caledon player. And, of course, that player was Racine. Racine digging for it hard. Caledon comes up with the puck. Got an open, two open players on the point. Brings it back out. Tries to center it up in front, almost got through the D, and I believe that was. Warwick, Warwick had a chance. Oh, it's... Almost caught him out of change. <laughs> Good defensive play by Gass as he knocked the puck away. Here comes Barber. One on one, Barber makes the move, gets around him. There's a hot score. Griffin Barber picked up that loose puck just in the neutral zone, took it down and got beat his man. And uh, Christopher Galise left all to his own device and uh, he could not stop Barber, who certainly was. Watch a little move at the blue line. There it is. That was uh, some end-to-end -end action there. Some opportunities at both ends of the ice, but ultimately it ends up Owen Sound puts the puck in the back of the net and up 4-1. Well, the other thing, Galiz, all by his lonesome, he get, took out, he was top of the crease and, and everything else, and just at the last moment, uh, he has to make a decision, and of course, uh, Barber puts the puck in, scoring his second goal of the afternoon. Barber again, in around, there's a shot, good stop by Galiz, oh. another shot. Sitting there right in the crease, had an opportunity to bang that in. Looks like, who was that, number 11, maybe Cade Norton. Norton would be the... Along the boards, Barber couldn't handle the puck. Gas knocks it up. Gas on his knees, loses control of it. McGlynn has it. McGlynn in his, in his own zone. McGlynn gets it back up on this side to Harrow. White, he gets control, tried to get it by Glenn, couldn't. Harrow again. And he fires it in deep, heads to the bench along with Norton. Gas and McGlynn going to change up all the way around. Barber in there chasing hard, but he'll head to the bench as he sees his line mates have left. Barber having a really good game, too. Santa Cruz coming in on goal. Oh, just missed that one. I don't know. It, I think it got the inside of the pad of, uh, of McKenna and just got deflected past the goal. Hornick along the boards. Hornig in dead, dumps it in quick. After it, Riolo. Preventus gets it up along the boards, and now here they come out. Little pass through center. Nice defensive play by McGlynn to knock it off a stick. Up to Warwick on this side. Warwick has a chance to get out in front, and he's knocked down. Puck in the goal crease, and... and uh, Glees looked like he'd been hit or something or was trying to sell it. 
<laughs> you had the hand up on the front of the mask there. Faceoff is in deep and some changes coming off the bench, of course, is Callum Valve. McGregor at center. Hornig on the left. Hornig gets the pass in the circle, gets a puck in the circle, and he's knocked down. McGregor again tried to bring it out in front at the side of the net, fighting for the loose puck. Finally, somebody comes up with it, but three on two. Down the left wing, I believe it's number 22, Preventus. In front to the. Santa Cruz and uh, and McKenna puts that big mitt on and stops the play. So I'll tell you, it's a uh, to get that fourth goal, and all of a sudden it appears that uh, Callen's uh, starting to move the puck around a bit. Yeah, I was wondering if the, you know he scored that first goal and, and got themselves in here, and then gave up a quick one to one sound. I thought that might have taken the wind out of their sails, but. You know, they're, they're generating a bit of offense here. It's going to be offside, or it should be offside. No, they waved nope. it off. Barber just dumps it back into the... I like the way McGregor's changing quickly and using all his lines. And Yeah, they've only got the two forward lines there, so... Uh, quick changes, you know, a hard 40, 45 seconds, and and change them out. And switching around the defense, have got five defensemen. Galiz playing just one super game, two seconds left and 20 seconds left in this period. And uh, 0 0.20 seconds left. This is where you want say. the, this is where you want the lefty taking the face off and right at the net. Yeah, there you go. Own Sound Junior attack up 4-1 under 13, U13. And See the score coming up on your sh on your screen as weekend in the rink. Uh, Ken Williams, Court Chapman, bringing his game this afternoon here. Um, I'm quite impressed with the Owen Sound Junior Tech. Two weekends in a row we've seen them. Yeah. And there's even an improvement from last year, last week. No. And this team is, is, is a much stronger, Calvin is a much stronger team. Yes, they are. Yeah. No, I've... Uh... Yeah, Owen Sound, once again, you know, we talked earlier, right, just a little bit better each game. As you want to do as a coach, you want to see them just a little bit better each practice, each game, working on and applying some things that you talked about and work on the practice. But, uh, boy, Harrow and Barber today, um, that's, and with Norton on that line, they've been they've been a force yes, this they game. They've been a difference maker here. And that's no disrespect to the other line because, you know, the last time we were here, Owen Sound depended on that Warwick line. So it's nice to see, you know, Coach McGregor there uh, has some balance there. I don't know how much he's juggled lines around at all this year on the forward line, but uh, looks like he's got two, two lines he can throw out there that can uh, dictate the play and put the puck in the net. Well, Barber's having one of the best games. We've seen him, I think this is the third time we've seen him this year. And uh, I think we've done the U2 as a U13 before. And uh, um, he's having a heck of a game. That whole line's got uh, three goals. So uh, it's, it's nice to see. Of course, Norton just dumps it off into the door, shaking after his Harrow. Harrow. Gas stops it at the blue line. Anticipated that very, very well. Chasing back into the corner, Jacob French. French with Barber. Then he's knocked down as Barber has his skate taken out from underneath him. No call, Norton. Norton stops, twists, turns, tries to center it. Didn't put it in a good spot. And then picked up as McCallan and chasing down the ice. As Jackson White, White gets oh. it again. Oh, and almost <laughs> put it towards the goal. Did never the wrong thing to do that. Gas has it behind his own goal up to Norton. Norton just taps it. Couldn't get it past. Jacob French. And French just gets it off and down the ice to go. Going to change up. Here comes the attack through center. This is Gas. Gas can skate. Gas has centered it right out in front, but the good defensive play. By Jacob French as he got a stick on a loose puck right in front of the net. There's a shot. Oh, 
And Galiz just made a great save. Back, here's another one. Over the top, a little bit of pressure. Kept at the blue line by Shannon. Through center ice, and here come the attack again. Back checking was Harrell, and he passes it off to Warwick. Warwick's gonna take a shot. Oh, that's gonna be a penalty. Yeah, he's gonna get two there for a cross check or something. Warwick. Well, they're not pointing at Warwick. Oh, yes, they are. Yeah, yeah he, <laughs> he, he, right in front of the referee, extended his stick right across one of the Calvin players' body, and down he went. Well, those are, the, those are the kind of penalties as a coach that you hate to take when he gives them 200 feet when... I love how they have the, uh, the, the penalty box camera as well. You can see the reaction there. I don't think Mr. Warwick can argue that call. Well, I mean, didn't you do, didn't you do that as a player? Oh, yeah, I didn't yeah, do me, yeah. what, you're me? calling me. Hands out and, you know. and uh, so that was a little different. I just went to penalty box. <laughs> I knew. I no sense arguing. They are, they are not going to change their call. No uh, matter what you say, how often you say it, how polite you are, or whatever. They're not changing their call. No. And, this, and, and the silly part about it is, honestly, the, the silly part about it is the fact is to continue to do it. Yeah. To get to change the call. I mean, we have all done it. You know, like. What are you doing? You know yes. what I mean? What was that? <laughs> or anything that you can say in that, in that period. Timeout, obviously, Caledon uh, has a chance to get one back, and he wants to make sure that yeah. they get it done. Good right. time to call a timeout. I like it. Right? 4 1. Got the power play early in the third period here. Draw something up, hoping you can make something click here. And, and, uh, and I'm sure Coach McGregor on the Owen Sound side, right? He's just telling his team, hey, listen, keep doing what we're doing, right? Let's kill the two minutes off. Dump the puck down the ice whenever we have the chance. Nothing fancy. Just get it out. Just off stop. Good work. There's a shot from off of the stick in front. Kept in at the blue line. And that's Val or Preventus. Two good plays. Tried to dump it back out in front. Stolen by Jarman. Jarman got it off the boards, but didn't get enough to get it out. Then Jarman wrong. takes his man out. High and off the glass, but just, yeah, couldn't get it out. Loose puck in front, couldn't get their sticks on it. Kept in oh. at the blue line, and finally the attack get it out and just dump it down the ice slowly. Chasing after that is, is Hornick. Oh, that almost cost them. Is that hit number 87 to Julio, and if he could have got control of that puck, it would right in on goal. In behind the goal, kept up right out in front. Little back oh. shot. Oh, just missed it. Tried to use the backhand. Mr. Silva had that chance. Kept in at the blue line and fired in by Riolo. And finally dumped down the ice, take the pressure off. 46 seconds left in the penalty. 12 minutes to go in this game. Own sound in control. Up four to one. Here at the Lonely Bayshore Community Center. McGlynn. Tried to back pass it, couldn't get it by his man, but McGlynn gets the puck again and then fires it, but nice play, knocked that out of the, of the just prevent us. Chasing down the ice. And puck gets kept on the... Harrell got a little chance on a loose puck, get a shorthanded one, just fires it wide. He whistled that, just drove it. Good, quick forehand and got that wrister away. Barber again. Good forecheck to work on the puck. Finally picked up Riolo and Riolo comes up the boards and now we're getting the stop and play again. Offside. I didn't know what, didn't know what was going on there for a second. I thought they were calling a penalty there, but. Well, I'm not sure what they're doing. Faceoff's going to be outside the blue line. Maybe he couldn't get him out of the penalty box. Maybe that's probably what the problem was. There's a shot off a leg in front, but not much on it by Bedford. Norton. Cross ice tried to get it to Barber. Barber just dumps it in behind the net. 
Loose puck right at the side. Just sitting there and everybody's after it. And finally, Belize gets a hold of it and puts, puts his big mitt on it and stops. Not a big goaltender considering no, that. And it looks like they've made a goal. You know, I missed that. It looks like they, they made a goalie change there, Gord. Looks like uh, the young fella who started the games over there on the bench. Isn't that? <laughs> Or am I seeing things here? Once again, we're, we're Bayshore isn't a huge arena, but we are up top here. Yeah, I think the young fellow wearing the white helmet's right in the middle of the bench over yep. there. Now we got to figure out who that is because there's only one goalie listed on our sheet. Well, when we get if we got the third uh, camera number three, it's probably fixed, so it's probably going to get French after it. Well, that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> You're right on that's pretty Christopher Belize is no longer in the goal. Number 88. Which we've is got, a, we've which got is two a, 88s. He's got a Santa Cruz. And a Santa Cruz, yeah. yeah. We've got two 88s and I believe they're both Santa Cruz. One's Mateo. So I'm wondering if number, I'm gonna go out on a limb and say number seven is Michaela Santa Cruz and number 88 is Mateo Santa Cruz. I got a 50-50 chance of getting that right. Oh, you're probably right. So. Yeah. <laughs> Face off. By Santa Cruz. Puck comes up along the boards and just dumped back on it quickly. Is White. White tried oh, to set nice it up. And a nice play, but just got a better defensive play by Gas as he got a stick on that puck. Timing factor now for, for Caledon as they're down four to one. Less than 10 minutes remaining in this third period. There's a shot by Warwick and we had a chance to put one in the new goaltender Santa Cruz, I believe it is. Long pass, tried oh. to get it back in a beautiful defensive play by Bedford, or McGlynn, pardon me, as McGlynn got in the way and prevented that breakaway pass because that's what it would have been stealing it. number 91 the Silva there's a shot and I believe McKenna got a piece of it another loose puck there's a shot again and McKenna gets in front of that how he could see that through that maze kept in at the blue line oh loose puck almost got their stick on it could have been a great scoring opportunity Simon Hornick couldn't control it and it's dumped down. Of course, changing up the forward line. Oh, nice play. Nice goal, I think that was Ben Warwick, yes. Yeah, Warwick got a piece, but just as I was watching the change, I took back and you could see Warwick get control of that puck, make a nice play. And it's uh, something you don't always see at this level. He got it up on his backhand and put yep. it away. Comes hard out of the corner there on the forehand, moves it quickly to the backhand. Boom, in the back of the net. Oh, nice beautiful goal. play. Nice goal from Ben Warwick. Santa Cruz didn't have a chance on that one. I believe it's in Santa Cruz anyway. In the corner, Barber. Or pardon me, Harold. Got it back out to the blue line. And Bedford's just going to fire it right back in. It's going to be offside. They clear. Love that rule. Keeps the game going. Trying to remember who the, I think it was Pavlich that got the National Hockey League came up with that. Oh, <laughs> a lot of offside chatter the last couple of nights in the NHL with that Connor McDavid yeah. <laughs> call, which was offside. So, anyways. Yeah, when you got, when you have a replay, you can see that good put stop by McKenna on that play. Here coming down the wing is Harrell. Harrell all alone. He made some, deserted him for the change, and Warwick out there on the ice. McGregor doing a good job of changing up and giving the players a lot, plenty of time on the ice, but not extending the shifts, which is smart in the sense that they've only got two lines. You want to keep them as fresh as possible. Warwick, little back pass off the boards. Tried to get it up the horn, and Gas keeps it in. Nice play. Is he, then he fanned on his shot, trying to get it through a maze of players. As he was bothered by Fiorenza. 
And, oh, somebody's going to go there. Both probably, going? Probably the extra person who came flying in there, I think. You got a couple of kids pushing each other, and then number 98 came flying in. It's either Fiorenza that's going or uh, Santa Cruz, so, or De Silva, pardon me. Give him a cry. You can't get the door open. Push. There we go. Don't. Oh, I was going to say, don't slam it. <laughs> You're going to get an extra two. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to voice his displeasure, but <laughs> yeah. he'll be, he'll be uh, more upset when they give him another two minutes here. Jarman kept that puck in. Jarman's going to take a long shot and trying to get his stick on to come back out the other side. Getting the Bayshore bounce coming into play on that one. And puck gets dumped down the ice. On the forecheck is De Silva. Stopped at the blue line. Could be a shorthanded chance here. Santa Cruz, Warwick takes it. Ford tries to turn him out. Oh, nice stop. Nice save by Santa Cruz. And more pushing and shoving. Now, hard, nice move by Warwick to get to the net there. Kept the puck on the forehand and cut in again. Go to the backhand there, but a great save by Santa Cruz. Almost got a shorthanded goal. 6-10 remaining here in the third period. Uh, Owen Sound Jr. attack in control this game. You're going to watch it here on Rogers Replay. You're going to see Warwick. Tried to go five-hole on that one. Nice save. That's a good stop by Santa Cruz. Seems like the junior attack today are just relentless. They just don't seem to want to give up. They're playing one of the best games I've seen them play. Harrell just fired it wide. And after it is Barber. Barber gets, tries to get control behind the bench. Can't. Finally, Callan gets it up. Try, glass stops it. At, yeah, stops it at the blue line. Kept it in. And it's just going to get dumped down the ice. But, of course... McKenna comes out and plays it. Has to be careful. Get back in if you've got a four-checking player. Taking that puck in is Grady Shannon, and he stopped at the blue line, and then Shannon just dumps it back in behind the net. Chasing after that is Preventus, and Preventus didn't get it out. Kept in by Warwick. Puck is in the slot area, and finally just backhanded out on a nice play by Spina. Glenn making some moves. Right into the slot area, but couldn't catch up to it. It was Norton, but Norton just dumps it in behind the net. Back out in front, right into the goal. Puck is covered. Referees didn't see it because referee was turning the other way, trying to get the door closed. <laughs> and the other one was blocked by the net. So Simon, Hor Simon Hornick having a good game today, as you see him on your screen. Face off in the circle one, believe it or not, by, by Kaladin, but didn't get control of that loose puck. Ben Warwick in the slot. Santa Cruz gets a hold of it. Santa Cruz comes around. His man can't beat Duke McGlynn, but back into the slot. There's a shot. And McKenna. Nice play. That's sheer determination because he had, should have had that puck knocked off a stick three or four times. Valve, Kalen Valve, I think, was the player. 5-1 yeah, here, four minutes left. If, uh, Callen's going to make a move. It's, you got to get one in the back of the net here real quick. DiGiulio took a shot. It was off a leg. Out come the attack on one. Just dump it up the ice. This could go right. No, it's not going to have enough. Chasing after it. Plus prevent us. And then knocked up along the boards by Austin Ford. Ford got it out. Gas gets it at center ice. Gas turns over the Canadian tire sign. Gas over the blue line. Stops back outside of Warwick. Oh, Warwick faked the shot. <laughs> and it just... 
just missed it as he just went off the end of his stick. Along this board, and that's DiGiulio, and he can't get any farther than center ice. Pass bouncing around at center. Picked up by Harrell, I believe, or Jarman. Back pass into the corner. Because Harrell knocked it back down. Puck at the side of the net, trying to kick it free. He's Kaladin doing a little pirouette and then on his knees and got a hold of the puck was Norton. Harrell along the boards. Can't keep it in. De Silva heading down the ice. Ends up falling as he gets knocked off the puck. Puck in right, right by the penalty box. Back up to De Silva. The valve got a chance. Valve takes the shot, went off. It went off Alex Jarman, who was trying to get back in position and did Norton. At, in the neutral zone, Norton tried to get it up to Harrow, and Harrow couldn't get there in time, and the puck is knocked away. Here comes Kaladin again. Time winding down. Kaladin looking for a loose puck. There's the shot, and it just was a weak one, and then right to the defense, picked up by McGlynn, I think, or Bedford. Barber, pardon me. Barber was in the back there playing a little defense, so. <laughs> and we're getting to stop and play at 216 remaining. So if you're, uh, I always like to talk about when the teams are playing next, if you want to get out and see them. So the same U13 team, right back here tomorrow at the Bay Shore versus Center Wellington. So if you have nothing to do tomorrow, I think we're expecting some snow tomorrow. So if you want to get in uh, out of the cold, out of the snow and avoid having to shovel, Come and watch this group play tomorrow at uh, 12 o'clock. Okay, if somebody's coming to do my driveway, I'll go. <laughs> <laughs> that seems like a fair exchange. Here, you shovel, I'll go watch some minor hockey. Yeah, Jacob French just knocks it in behind the net, but comes out on this side. Santa Cruz into the corner, tried to center it, couldn't get it on it. Warwick right there. Warwick bats it out along the boards. And shot right back in by French. And that's Bedford that's picking it up. Probably Shannon. Shannon stops at the blue line, just drops, drives it in, wastes some time. 133 remaining in this game, and it'll be all she wrote. But it looks like the attacker in control. Five to one. Barber along the boards. Couldn't get by his man. And Gas is going to pick it up in his own zone. McKenna was going to go out and help him out. Here comes Gas through center. Oh, nice play. She got it up and put it on the stick of Harrow, and Harrow couldn't control the pass. I'm just going to ice it, and that's going to... They can have that change with one minute remaining, and uh, McGregor and his uh, brain trust over there looking pretty happy with this outcome right now. It would really take oh. something to... You know what? He's, he's got to be extremely happy with this. Playing a team that's a little bit ahead of you in the standings. Yep. Right? So you're, you're looking to move up the standings, uh, get yourself in a better position for, for playoffs and seeding and stuff like that. And 5-1 uh, five, one, five, one win. He's got to be extremely happy. Puts him over 500 for the year. And they've had, they struggled at the beginning of the year. They've been winning a lot more lately. And I don't think they've been meeting any teams any weaker or stronger. They've just been playing better. And that's uh, that, that bodes well for what's coming up, like you say, the playoff time and because uh, it comes quick. It does. It's hard to believe that it's a week before Christmas. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, a week from tomorrow morning, all the kids will be up rushing downstairs. Well, even some of the adults hoping will be well, you know, rushing downstairs. <laughs> yeah, hoping that the, that the man in red brought them what they wanted. That skill saw that's underneath the tree. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a good Christmas at the Chapman house. <laughs> no, I, no, I got one of those. I don't need another one. So <laughs> Duke McGlynn has the puck as the time is winding down and coming in on goal. Oh, don't shoot don't the puck. Don't do it. He's being told. Yeah. Just oh. let him be. Just let him be. I'm not so sure he was aware of the... They're going to give him a penalty. For that, so that gets added to the score sheet, the game sheet. What do you get a misconduct for? Yeah, yes, yeah. Referee went over and made sure that got marked down as a penalty. Great game this afternoon for like we've talked about the uh, boy. Um, 
this, this is a this is a, a, a good win for Owen Sound, like you said. There puts them over 500. They did all the little things well today. No, exactly. A, a, a few uh, a few things that I liked from from up here where we are. Um, they certainly moved the puck well. You know, I, my old coaching partner, Steve McRae, Baz, always talked about good sticks, good sticks. Yeah. And I did see a lot of that out there today. Getting the stick in the lane, right? Taking away the passing lane, uh, taking away the shooting lane, breaking up passes, uh, a lot of that out there today. Uh, good job by the Owen Sound team. Uh, Tyson Gass, uh, for me, stood out on the defensive end for Owen Sound. Brushed the puck a couple of times. Likes to come out around the net, use the net, right? To separate himself from the defender. Yeah, some good things. And and we talked about it earlier, Gord, that Horton, Barber, sorry, Norton, Harrow, and Barber line, yes. I think, today. Um, they stood out as well. Harrow and Barber, I'm, I'm, I think they're both NRPs. I could be wrong. Uh, but that line was a difference maker today for sure. Oh, I think so. And, uh, and, uh, and that's what you want because last week when we were looking at it, it was Warwick and his, and his winner. Yeah, exactly. They were the ones that were doing the work. This year it was the other way around. And, you know, I'm looking up and thinking after, every, you know, about player of the game. I just would like, we could, as far as I'm concerned, line of the game. Yep. Because that line played so well. All three players deserve to be player of the game. And, I, of course, we discussed who they were in the first place, and that was um, Norton and Jarman and Barber. And uh, Barber picked up two goals uh, and an assist. And But that whole line was effective. They were, good. They were fantastic. I think that was the difference in the game. Yep, I agree. I agree. And for Caledon. We think we have it right. We apologize to everybody out here. We think number seven was Michaela Santa Cruz. Um, he scored the one goal. Yeah. Great goal. Nice looking goal. And has some other scoring chances, but definitely stood out to me from up here, Michaela Santa Cruz. Well, I would say that that's a good choice for player of the game. I won't go on to say, but I was kind of impressed with their goaltending too because uh, both goalies, uh, they changed up at, at the end of the second period. Where we had Galiz, uh, Christopher de Galiz, and for the first two periods, the reason why the game was only 5-1 is because yep. he was in goal. Yep, made some key saves, jumped on some loose pucks in the blue paint there, and and uh, kept it close. I mean, you know, it was it was close earlier on. Calvin scored the one goal, probably gave him a little uh, little you know a little bit of life there, and then Owen went down the ice and uh, and scored to go back up by two goals. So that took the wind out of their sails. But you know what? They kept uh, they kept playing. They played a full uh, 40 minutes and come out on the short end though unfortunately well we talk about uh, christmas holidays uh i guess these coaches were like a couple of wins underneath the tree and uh, the, exactly this time around and it's christmas coming up folks uh remember if you're out and about and your uh kids are out of school uh, uh keep a special eye on these kids sometimes don't think and watch where they're going when they're on the roads also uh, don't drink and drive the life you save may be mine so uh or yours or your Good own message um because uh that's just the wrong thing to do and uh enjoy the holidays and uh remember uh what time of year it is absolutely and the boys in blue are going to be out they'll all be out they'll yeah. be out yep looking police service uh will be looking out so uh don't take a chance don't drink and drive it's holidays so we're going to take a short break we're going to come back and uh talk to you about the under 16 game that we got coming up on uh, on rogers in the next uh, five or ten minutes and uh um it should be a good one too it'll be a good game it'll be a great game this is uh weekend at the rink on rogers tv Brought to you by Ignite TV. Now you're in command. Visit Rogers.com for more details. What is it? Anxiety disorder. Depression. I'm clear. 
One in two, a flip of a coin. That's the same chance we'll experience a mental illness by the time we're 40. A dollar a day can help change those odds and bring hope to those in need. I did it. I need it. A hero gave it. And I am alive. As an organ donor, you can save up to eight lives and enhance the lives of 75 others. Please go to our website. Pledge a gift of life. You'll be glad you did. Every year, dozens of Canadians are killed or seriously injured because they take risks around railway tracks. Talk to your loved ones about rail safety. Visit stoptracktragedies.ca. here on Rogers TV and of course we're at the JD MacArthur Arena here in Owen Sound Ken Williams and I'm Gord Chapman and you're taking a look at our ice surface out there and uh, um, <laughs> nothing's happened <laughs> because no, we're, no, between, Zamboni going we're by. between games we've got an under 16 game coming up and between Owen Sound and uh, oh gosh uh, Woolwich 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 yeah so yeah I, I saw the bus <laughs> <laughs> I should remember but the Woolwich, of course, um, a great hockey uh, area, great town. And, uh, of course, I believe Dan Snyder was from there, that yep. area, too. And uh, exactly, yeah, Dan Snyder Memorial Rink there down in Elmira for Woolwich. One of my favorite my favorite rinks, one of my top three favorite rinks, hands down, to go to coaching minor hockey. Love it there. So well. there's a shot at the standings, quick look at the standings, Owen Sound. Uh, tied last night, had a game against Guelph last night. Tied 4-4. Um, and tomorrow, Guelph is back here in... Uh, no, sorry, they go to Guelph tomorrow. Owen Sound's going down to Guelph. Play at the Sleeman Centre. Another great rink. Uh, not in my top three, though. But um, anyways, two good teams here today. Owen Sound, top of the stand. You can see Woolwich down there. Sitting in ninth, 8-6-2. Uh, having a decent year. Uh, played about 500, so we're, I think we're in for a good game here again today, Gord. Well, and, and that's what we want. They won 6-2 last week on TV, and uh, and uh, we enjoyed watching the game. But they've got some good players that we can be looking at too. So, um, you know, uh, we got Ty Shouldice. We got the right time this time around, so for sure. But uh, um, you look at this team; it's pretty solid right, right, right through the lineup. This is a solid Owen Sound U16 team. Um, as you can see there by the standings, they're just showing, you know, first place. We talked last week about their success at tournaments. They always make it to Sunday afternoon, make it to some championship games. It's come up a little bit short in those championship games. Um, but you know what? It's, it's more games, right? It's, it's uh, every game you can play helps you as you look forward towards the end of the year. Playoffs, playdowns, et cetera, et cetera. One of the, one of the things that you hear from all, in, in all sports, you got to learn how to win and how much stock do you take in that when you got a minor hockey league team that these guys can win but they, they don't seem to want to talk about tournaments they don't get that that one more yeah and I'm, I'm sure I, I know they're only kids and, and stuff like that uh, or young men um, I'm sure that weighs on them a little bit you know if you're thinking you know you know you start two three you string a few together where you lose in the championship and you think you can never get over that hump uh, but I think what they got to do, they got to look at this regular season that they're having and see that they're beating some good teams, right? And that's the approach they got to take the next time they get into a, a playoff series or a championship game and a tournament, knowing that they've, they've plant, they have beat plenty of good teams throughout the year. And that, that's, that's, that's the way you got to think going into a game like that. You keep driving it into their brains that, 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 that they're a good team yep. and they can win yep. and what it takes to be one more one more step exactly you right. you, you, the kid they, you got to get the mindset with the with the players that every time they come to the rink they're going to win right it's and it's not being cocky it's being confident and there is a difference there right and if you can get them coming to the rink with their chest stuck out a little bit you know a little bit of a swagger uh and being really confident they can beat anybody right that that starts to that starts to show on the ice 
Well, I'll tell you, I'm looking forward to this game because, I mean, we've uh, sort of talked about uh, what, it, what it's going to take. And uh, these, uh, these kids are fun to watch. We've watched them. Over, I have watched them for the last eight years, watching them going through the, the ranks. And I swear there must be something in the water somewhere because these kids are big. <laughs> they got some and, you know, big they have kids. Grown and they're, they're young men. And uh, some of those 15-, 16-year-olds that are out there are, they're big. are, are big. And... Looking I've at the Woolwich team out there, looks like they have some as well that are uh, just as big. So I, I know anytime when I was coaching minor hockey, when you're playing Woolwich, didn't matter what age group, you're in for a tough game. Well, I used to say with my young lads, uh, <laughs> with the fridge, we got a new fridge, but we already changed the light three times. Because they're. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. So uh, we got some big boys that can play some hockey here on Rogers TV, and I uh, better find, be able to find the lineup. So. I'm missing the Woolwich line, but it's here somewhere. There, oh, we there go. you go. Hey. Woolwich, of course, in there. I'm not going to even attempt to speculate whether that's black or dark blue. blue. The dark blue. Dark blue for Woolwich, yes. I was going to say black. So. Dark colors, I have trouble deciding. Most of the time, I can tell you whether. It's pink or whatever. <laughs> it gets to the dark one. Black, dark blue, dark green. You know, I'm... Well, which, of course, uh, a hockey hotbed, too, because, that, like you say, they've had some great players come out of that, of that program in the junior A and to, 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 uh, to the pros and to uh, university hockey. And... Uh, they're just kids that grow up and enjoy the game. We get out and play the beer leagues and the stuff when they become adults. And That's the thing about minor hockey and that, and no matter what level you play, right? Like I always told even my son and, and other kids, right? It's Hockey's kind of that, uh, it's that life game, right? It's that social aspect of your life later on because uh, whether it's house league, rep hockey, even guys that go on and play a little bit of, you know, minor pro and pro hockey. Ultimately, it, it ends with beer league and being out with your friends and, and you know, on a Sunday morning or a, or a Thursday night or something like that and, and just being with some buddies and, and get out in the ice and hanging out afterwards. I have a, fr I have a friend of mine that uh, I've known for a long time, played hockey with, who had the, who was in the Hockey Hall of Fame. Not because he was a famous player, but because he played with a famous player. Oh. And his team from Brantford's picture of his oh. Pee team is in the Hockey Hall of Fame. So it's that whole, it's that whole thing about I played with him. Yep. It's like if we played together on the same team, I played hockey with Ken. You know, yep. or you're walking down the street, boy, you go, who's that guy? Oh, I played with him in the puppet. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It was part of your team. Right? Yeah, that, exactly. Uh, uh, yeah, the social aspect of. Uh, as you get older, it's, uh, it's that camaraderie in the dressing room, sit around and tell horror stories. That's, that's what it's uh, all about. And, but, uh, yeah, and it starts at this level. And these kids, when they start at 10 years old or 8 years old and they're playing, they will always remember the team that they played on. Exactly, exactly. Friends for life. We always, we always forget about that. We were talking about earlier in the, in the telecast about that. Uh, having players play and then unfortunately not making that particular team and, and so on and so forth. But they still, that, that camaraderie is still there. They may, you know, they're looking at three different kids across the dressing room, but the team, the team from the year before, and especially if they if they do well and go on to like OMHA finals and win or even get to the finals, um, those those memories, and you never lose them. And uh, that's the exciting thing about playing the sport is that, um, those kind of things are, will stick with you for the rest of your life. So. Absolutely. And the other thing is, I always tell kids when they win a championship, I said, enjoy, because it doesn't happen often. Yeah, no, except, yes, I agree 100%. I remember winning a house league championship, kids are all excited and jumped up and down, and I said, enjoy. You don't do this, even at that level, often. You get there maybe, but you don't always don't win. Always take win a, look at the guys at National Hockey League. Look at Stanley Cup. They have one win in a 20-year career or none. Yeah, there's you know. a lot of good players that played the game that are in the Hall of Fame or whatever and never got anywhere near winning a Stanley Cup. Marcel Dion reminds me of that one. Played in the Western Hockey West with uh, L.A. for years. And 
One of the best players that ever played. Never, never touched a cup. Here we get started here. The under 16 game Woolwich Owen Sound McCarthy. He has the puck at the blue line, just dumps it off the board. And that's Brock Locking. We just got some, there's some jump in this game right already. McCarthy, got Bennett, he's down the wall, can't get by, Thielen. Bennett finally gets in behind the net, comes out the far side. Puck stopped kind of funny there and didn't. A little wet down there maybe and stuck to the ice. Puck's a little too warm yet. Newt was carrying that puck up the ice, gets knocked down. Here comes the attack and then good play by Stockin. And then Freeze couldn't control it. Laycock just dumps it into the zone, chasing after it. Laycock has the loose puck in front, goes to the goal creep, backhand shot by Cunningham, and he couldn't convert that either as it hit a body in front. Whoa. Well, that was a quick whistle because that puck <laughs> slid out. Who's that? Uh, Blake Bites, the goaltender. A little bit of a whiff on the puck there, and... and uh, was sitting right in front of him. But yeah, like you said, a whistle, a little bit of a quick whistle, but. Puck just got a guy, got loose, and now we're, got, Fishman got tossed out. Joshua Carson, there's a shot, just whistled by, and then the other one just wide. The attack had a chance, and that shot that went wide, of course, the last one was Reed Solomon. Through center ice, Fishman, he's got blocked nicely. A good play by Kerr. John Kerr blocked that shot. Puck comes back out to the blue line. Carson. Carson takes a long shot. It bounced funny. Liam Cook just backs the big paddle, knocks it back in behind the net. Goble at the blue line, steals it. Goble gets it again as it's off the leg. Goble, nice shot. And Cook just squeezes it and stops the play. Early here in the first period, we play 3.15 stop time for under 16. Boy, there's got to be something in the water. These are big kids on both teams. <laughs> Live near a nuclear plant or something. <laughs> Pace off in the circle. Trying to get that loose puck is Guidon. Through center ice, still trying to have it. And, and it's offside. Believe. Tyson Shouldice actually put himself offside as he went in backwards, not having control of the puck. So Woods at center along with Guidon. Guidon wins the draw. Johnson tried to knock it in. And then he had the puck taken away. Brown. Cross ice pass off a stick and then fired down the ice by Shaper. <laughs> a little bit of contact there. A little board meeting. <laughs> Puck in the corner trying to get he's, a duck. That, that hurt him. He's, yeah, he, he's headed to the bench pretty quickly. I, I don't think it looks like a wrist or a shoulder. Yeah, I think, yeah, it could be bad news for the wrist or the arm. I mean, he is in some discomfort. I hope he's all right. Looks like the trainer and somebody else is attending to him over there. Referee's over. Yeah, we can. Uh, see him about taking the dressing room. I think room. we can. Unfortunately, we can hear him yelling across the ice here. They're going to take him to the dressing room. I don't know what they're doing. The one coach looks like he's uh, he's waving for somebody to come over. Well, both the trainer and the coach are looking at him. Assistant coach taught under Brad Heckert. Well, he seems to be up and letting him yeah. throw. I think he's going to help him across the ice here. Yeah, he is trying to hold that arm wrist. or wrist. Yeah. Yeah, it doesn't look very good the way he's holding it, is it? So, unfortunately, I, we sure hope that he's he's okay. I didn't quite get his number yet. We'll... 
Shirt's tucked inside his pants there as well. Hard to see from up here. But uh, uh, hopefully he's all right. You don't like to see anybody get hurt. No, that's true. We certainly don't. Goebel. Goebel, there we go. Connor Goebel. Well, the face-offs will be down deep, deep to the right of goaltender uh, Liam Cook. And uh, referee there is all around with the players that... Yeah, it looks like it, just a little bit of a... From what I could see up here, now it was down to our left, so it is hard to see from up here in the... In the I'll call it the gondola. Um, but I think it was just a bit of a body check along the boards. And yeah. Just caught him the wrong way. Caught him the wrong way. It was Andrew, was Andrew, I just hope, and he was uh, in, a, in a, he headed to the bench immediately too, so we hope he's uh, he's better and uh, it's not as serious as it could be. And down the left wing, Clagus, there's a shot, good stop by the goaltender, number 31, Blake Bites. Oh, <laughs> Good defensive play is knocked. It's Travis Brown with a good stick, knocked that off into the corner. That pass was labeled. Heipel. Got it through the stick. McCarthy takes the shot, it's off a leg, and of course that's Logan Clegg has blocked that. Don't give them the shooting lanes, and that's what they tried to do. Through center ice, Clegus, and then he's knocked down in the circle. There's a loose puck that fired off a leg in front by Scholdice. I guess Scholdice is no longer um, AP. He's part of the team. Yeah, so. he must be part of the team. I know we a couple of times. Well, at the start of the year, we were talking about that. No number on the back of the jersey, so I don't know if he was a late addition or. So he hasn't got his name on the back of the jersey yet either, but uh, puck gets bounced around. And some people are having trouble getting a hold of it. In front, Taylor Bennett had a chance. Chasing down this side, of course, it's Cole Hall. Hall got a cross ice pass. Then it's up off the skate of Bennett. Bennett just shoots it, a lazy shot that could have given him problems. And Bites makes the save. One of those fluttering pucks that you're not yeah, sure. You misjudge and boom, thing you know it's in the net. It looked like it kind of handcuffed him there, off the glove and up onto his shoulder. Well, you sort of expect him to come whistling at you. And Kerr, he takes a shot, stopped by Bites. Puck along the board, centered right out in front. And, uh, Picking it up is McCarthy. McCarthy couldn't get it through center past Cawthorn. Cawthorn. Back through center ice. Marcus Carthorn. Picking it up is Red. Solomon along the one board tried to center it out. Tegan Cunningham getting the shoulder as he was getting set to get the puck. Knocked back into the corner by Solomon. And in behind the net on it. To Scheifer. Scheifer gets it back. And Kerr has it at center ice. Kerr looking for the open man, dumps it back through, can't get it there. And knocked up the ice is Smith, Carson Smith. Puck goes down deep, but was hit, knocked out, no whistle. Kerr, he just fires it around the other side, right onto the stick of Marcus Cawthorn. Cawthorn just takes it back in his own zone. Cawthorn's gonna get up ahead of steam coming through the neutral zone. Back pass off the body. As Solomon couldn't control the pass, and then Solomon hits his man. Puck just lays there for a fraction of a second, and it's dumped down the ice, and we're going to get a uh, icing call. Passes just seem to be off a little bit on both sides right now. You see some kids breaking through the neutral zone. Passes just a little bit behind them in their skates, so slowing the flow of the game down a little bit right now. Well, you're wondering if uh, that's uh, just nerves or what it is, but uh, both these teams feeling each other out. I think they played each other before, so they should know what they have to offer. Puck fired right across the slot area, and it's picked up. 
by Guido. Guido just dumps it back inside. Chasing after is Johnson. Knocked right out of his hands as the stick was the pass. Aiken, he just, and it's off. Yep. Took a quick look there, Gorge, you're right. Yeah, 3-1. Owen Sound beat them in Elmira back on November the 13th. 3-1 win. So it's, uh, I guess, uh, Woolwich wants to get back at these guys up here, don't they? Because uh, beat them in their bar and want to beat them in theirs. Face off, Smith. Controls the puck in the circle, but then finally loses it. Out coming down the ice is Cawthorn. Cawthorn just dumps it into the corner, chasing it after it. Shouldice. Shouldice gets it back to Brown. Oh, that just missed the post. Plagueis go back and shot goes over the boards and... So they Good gonna... job by Brown there. He kept the puck in at the blue line. This just changed his angle and the angle of his shot a little bit. And... Just whistled it a little bit wide. Oh, boy, that was close. And it was open, too. It actually was a really good shot because he was going to go to the back side, so. Brandon Fishman. Going to face off against Nathan Laycock. They added a few seconds onto the clock. They added eight seconds onto the clock there. Taylor Bennett. Bennett. Trying to read his number and he's failed miserably on that one. Brown has it. To Bennett. It's offside. They waved it off. Good play defensively by Gibbons as he stopped there to off the oh. glove. That was close. I'm not sure that was on the net or not, but that could have been just absolutely horrendous if it changed direction. Bennett. Or Gibbons after the puck. Couldn't control it. Pass across ice as Kidd missed the pass. In behind his own net. Logan Clegus. Clegus gives it off to Gibbons. Gibson. Gibbons still has the puck in the neutral zone. Gibbons. Long pass just short of Bennett as he whipped in there. Bennett comes his side. Now, pardon me, that was that was Gibbons. Puck just through center ice and then fired right back down off the stick of Kidd. In behind his own goals, Travis Brown. Brown gets it through center, but then and takes his man out at the same time. That's number 16, I believe that was Evan Woods. We'll give him a charge there. I'm not sure about that call, but anyway, that's what it is. Travis Brown's going to the penalty box for charging. Thought it was more like he was still in his motion or going coming out of the zone when he hit him. Pace up. On the power play. Heifel just knocks it right back inside. And then fired down the ice nicely. By Kerr as he got that loose puck. Shiper staying up by the blue line. Chasing in behind the net. It's tailing. Out along the boards to Heifel. To Newt. There's the shot offside. Of course, midget hockey or as I've under 16, I not supposed to use that term anymore, but uh, for those folks that uh, under 16 is the middle midget hockey, and uh, since I've already said it. Um, two referees, two linesmen. Newt, cross ice, then driven right back inside by McCarthy. Heupel, just off the board, trying to make the play. There's the shot, just whistled wide. Is that puck where Wesley Aiken got close at the blue line? McCarthy keeps it on this side. McCarthy passed it off to stake, and there's a shot off a body in front. Chasing after it, of course, is Cawthorn, number nine. Back out to the blue line, and then Newt just drives it right back into the corner. Puck is bouncing in the circle. Newt's going to get it at the blue line, takes oh, a shot, and that was shot quick. That. Nice yeah. save by Liam Cook. I don't think Cook was ready for that either because <laughs> uh, it looked like the puck was changing direction, and it didn't. 
Heupel let them into the stick. Patrick McCarthy. McCarthy couldn't control it. Then the puck comes up on the wing to Aiken. Aiken just leaves it there. Aiken gets it back. Got a screen. And a great play by Tegan Cunningham to push him outside and off the puck, pardon me, not offside, and uh, break up the play. Aiken hanging on to the puck just a little too long there. Yes, he did. And, of course, that caused the play to get turned around. Looks like the attacker going to kill this penalty off and just fire the puck down the ice. And that's, oh, stopped by the goaltender, so no icing. Inside the zone, Dick Fishman fishing to flex the puck back on right on the stick of the own sound defenseman. Smith has it. Smith ends up giving it away to Guido. Guido trying to get it into the slot area and then just knocked off the puck. Was Shogai says he had a chance at the side of the net. Pretty tight, though. Taylor knocked Shogai down again. Shogai trying to chase after the puck. Smith. Comes back out to Laycock at the blue line. Laycock keeps it in. Gets it up to Shouldice. Shouldice. Shouldice makes a nice play. And then good block by Smith. The Shouldice played real hard to keep that puck and get it to the net. Comes Shouldice again. Back to Laycock. Laycock looking for a lane. Can't get it. And dumps it off into the corner. Whole Shouldice. He turns on the boards. Loses the puck. In after it. Guidon. Fishman's going to have a chance. He gets control. A nice try to get that puck, but did the right thing, get it towards the net. And Cook had a pretty simple save. 344 remaining here in the first period of a fairly very entertaining hockey game. Not a whole lot of scoring chances either way, but uh, certainly going back and forth here, a couple power play opportunities. But the uh, own sound killed off that penalty really, really well. Kept that puck to the outside. And Hempel just drives it right in on. Along the boards, winning that draw. Bennett takes his man out. Going to be offside. McVicker. Got out in time. Off the skate. Just of Evan Woods, and Woods chases oh, look out. out. And faceoff's going to be deep in the zone to yeah. the left. The goaltender, Liam Cook. Hall fired that into his own bench there. Well, pretty close to getting that penalty of leaving the, leaving the arena. Carson takes a shot. Attack coming through center. Puck deflect and letting it couldn't handle it. Temple has it. Little back pass off the boards. Letting it didn't couldn't end. He couldn't get it to him. Letting it four checking. Almost got the puck. Then it knocks it back into his own zone. Up along the boards. Little back pass. Bennett couldn't get it. McVicker wasn't ready. And that was Gibbons. Kerr has it in his own zone. Kerr twists, turns, gets it up along the board, dumps it off. Schieffer couldn't grab it. Carson, he just fires it down and went off, went off a leg, no ice, and Kerr on it quickly. Then he gets checked off the puck. This and got a piece of that puck, went outside. Nice oh, play nice. by Carson. Uh, Hand yeah. pass, but you boy, was that, that was one of the best plays of the game. I think he'll take that hand pass. Uh... Well, I think this is under 16 hockey, isn't it? Lettinen's going to get himself in more trouble than what he... Is there going to be no penalties on that? I think he's trying to get somebody to the box here. I don't know who's going...
Well, with all that going on, there was one guy going to the penalty box? Nope. Oh, no, Looks two. Like two. And, you know, I, I didn't see all of this. And, you know, uh, Jonah Kerr, he was taking a lot there from the other player. Um, and kudos, I didn't see him retaliate. And kudos to Jonah Kerr for not retaliating. retaliating. Unless I missed something, it's... Both going to go for uh, coincidental. Both going to go for roughing. Uh, and uh, penalty could be a little bit longer because of them to get out of the box. They're going to have to have a stop and play. So, But Schaefer was uh, instigating that, and I figured he should have got a couple extra yeah, minutes. I, but uh, I, I agree, Gord. It, uh, like I say, I didn't see Jonah Kerr doing anything there. They had a hold of his head. They had him in a headlock, grabbing the back of his jersey, reefing on it. And, and uh, good for him for not reacting. Taylor fired from the point right on goal. Taylor keeps it in, a bouncing puck. Up to Staken, and then Staken is in the corner, and he's taken out. By Brown, Newt can't keep the puck in, just goes by the two officials. Newt has it. She just dumps it back along the boards, chasing down to Solomon. And there's that. Drew center rises a couple of times. Guys have just got spun around. McCarthy off, the, couldn't get it off the board, but this man to get for Cawthorn has it. Dumps it back to the point. Back on this side to Clagus. Clagus has it, got a chance. Look for the screenshot. There's another on the rebound. Clagus still fighting after it, and he's going to get. <laughs> Bites makes a good stop on this, and uh, you know, the. You've got to allow them to uh, lose puck, uh, but uh, I'm a firm believer they should change that rule. And if the moment anything happens in the paint should be a 10-minute misconduct, then you watch it all stop uh, instead of allowing them to continue to do that. It, do, it certainly does uh, it does cause some problems, right? That puck and, and the timing of it and the covered up. I mean, he did have it there, covered up that little jab afterwards. Maybe fortunate he's not getting the penalty there. True enough. I, but, but it just leads to more problems, right? It yeah, leads, oh. to more, it, it leads to some pushing and shoving. And, and this one, we've already had a couple little situations where things got a little chippy, and that's just going to add to it. You certainly don't want things getting out of hand. Kid chasing the puck down. Picked up by Locking. Brock Locking in behind his own goal. Picked it up. Almost nice defensive play by Locking. If that puck was getting centered. Chasing after it. Shouldice. Shouldice in behind the net for checking. Number 16, and I believe that's Johnson. Laycock chasing after it. He had quite the body check just a little bit earlier. He just laid the body on. Almost had that. Shouldice trying to get around. Smith. And then Shouldice is dumped down. Smith loses his stick. And there goes the whistle and the horn. And the first one is in the books, but there's nothing to talk about as far as goals are concerned. But uh, I'm not even sure you would say these two teams are trying to feel each other out. It's just uh, some pretty good goaltending uh, uh, for uh, Woolwich. And, uh, and of course, Liam Cook being Johnny on the spot when he had to be. So. Yep, a couple key saves. And both goalies, you know, had one or two of those, you know, knuckleballs, if you want to say. Or a couple of shots as well that they didn't expect. and But, yeah, 0-0. Zero, zero. Looks like we're heading for, you know, it looks like they had a tight game down on Myra there on November the 13th when it was 3-1 Owen Sound. And, and that's the direction we're heading here. So, I'm sure the conversation, both benches, hey, listen, you know what, let's play the game. Um, let's not get into penalty trouble here. Let's try not to be chippy. Give the other team the power play because the way this game's going, you don't want to go down one nothing or 2 nothing. There is no doubt in my mind that uh, this uh, team, uh, well, the attack team, can score. So you do not want to give them any yep. opportunities and be sitting in the penalty box. So. Right. 86 goals scored so far this year in the Tri-County Minor Hockey League alone. 17, uh, 17 games played. So what's that? That's a little over, a hair over five goals a game. That's so they can put the puck in the net. They can put the puck in the net. They've only given up 30 goals. So... There were some big hits in that period, too, uh, that uh, 
you always don't expect at, at a minor hockey league level, but these kids are big and they're not afraid to use their size. At least the coaches are telling me to use their size, but the kids aren't afraid to do it. Although one sound ended up with a penalty, which I thought it was a, he got a charging call, but I thought that was a penalty. But uh, again, too, we're watching it from up here. We don't get to see it live action down in the ice service, and our officials usually do a pretty darn good job. Absolutely, they do. It's a good crew that they have out there today. That's a big hit by Kerr. Puck in the zone, puck in back out, Hall on one point. Newt got the puck free, and Woods had to go off the end of his stick. Woods again gets a hold of it, dumps it back, gets out of trouble. Lettinen has it. Lettinen then lost it. McBriver oh. fanned on his chance, and he had it. Hall, Woods, Kerr. Hall has it now in the corner, and he lost it. Puck fired back in behind the net. Nobody there to keep it in. Newt chases it down. And a little back pass. Look to see about passing it across ice and saw the white jersey didn't do it. Hall, he just knocks it down the ice. Four checking. Bennett. Bennett takes his man in along the board. Back outside the Hall. Hall has a chance. They score! Put it the only place he could score a goal over the shoulder blocker side, and boy, that was something else. That was a nice shot from Hall. Oh. That was a long ways out. Didn't look like the goalie was screened, but I'm sure we're going to see a replay here. No, I just think he put it where he, where he had to. Uh, he just had to beat the one player. And uh, Mark Jones should have a show that I'm not sure, but. Uh, get, Puck comes back. It was a quick. It was one of those shots. It wasn't even a slap shot. It was just a high, hard wrist shot, and it got by the goaltender. Yeah, so. good high blocker side. Got by him there. And quick one nothing. Uh, sound goes up. Sorry, one nothing here early in the second period. A quick goal. Puck inside the zone. Own sound on it, but finally chasing it off to this side. They gain just haphazardly handling the puck. Was Lincoln Tear in the tack right on it, right off the bat. There's a shot coming out of the corner by Cawthorn. Chasing after oh. McCarthy, he couldn't get yeah, it out. That is, he's going to get the arms up. There's going to be a penalty there. And boy, I. <laughs> Give him a four four minute head contact there. While the one referee is making the call, the other referee is getting an absolute earful from the head coach of the Woolwich team. Well, he's got a penalty. What more is he wants? He got four. What's he? Four. Yeah. I think it sounds like he was shouting. That's the third time. So now that referee didn't have his arm up. The the referee closest to the play made the call. So. Four minute power play, chasing after that's Wood. Newt, pardon me. Cross ice pass. Try to set it up off a stick. Of number nine, Marcus Carthorn. Fishman. Man, a good play. By Carson get on to get the puck down the ice. Flipped up along the boards and then fired right back in. It will be offside, cleared up. Four check, shoulder ice. Shouldai's got good wheels. He can skate. That's why he's out there pen doing the penalty kill. Here they come. Kid. Kid. Good stick by Guido as he got his shoulder as he got a piece of that puck to change the direction. And make that pass a little hard and hard hand hard to handle. Newt in his own zone. Newt. Little lead pass and up ice. Got to be careful of the lows. Fred, Fred. Freed gets it. Cross ice, couldn't quite put it on. The, then it's just fired. Couldn't quite put it on the stick. A fisherman as he was breaking down the left wing. Kid has it in the... Couldn't get it to Fishman, who was off to the side of the goal. And that was Keaton Kid. There's a... Fishman had a wrap around and then got a shot away. 
and I believe it's either a stick at the post or he hit uh, the puck hit it. So didn't go in anyway. Laycock. Puck in the circle, fighting with it. Back to the blue line. Back on this side to Carson. Carson has it. Carson takes a shot. He just whistles that wide. Smith has got to run back down the ice and chase it. Johnson heading to the bench. Fresh legs. Oh, oh good stop. Five bites. It gave it away right in the slot area. And I believe that number 19, McVicker, had the opportunity to put that one away. Yeah, not much happened in there for the Woolwich power play for the first two minutes, and that would have been a that would have been tough giving up that shorthanded goal and they coughed up the puck. One nothing only here in the second period. Attack in control for the moment. Kerr has it, just gonna dump it down the ice. Trying to get the Carson had trouble hanging on to it because it was just then the little butterfly passes Woods. He just dumps it in. Now they got to chase Scheiper after it. On this side to Hempel. Hempel couldn't keep Hempel couldn't keep it in. Letting and back across ice. Gives it up to Carson. Carson's gonna leg it in. And then stealing the puck from him was Gibbons. And now Kerr has it. Kerr couldn't quite get it down the ice. Letting and stole it as he knocked it out of the air. Carson. In deep and finally fired down the ice and I think for a moment I thought they were giving him a penalty. Yeah, I thought I heard the door open yeah, there. So did I. <laughs> I thought I thought they because it went out, so I don't must have went off a stick. Face off back to Campbell. Nice job at in the book. By staking, and then again, to a shot on goal. A little bit of uh, rough stuff in front of the goal as they're getting ready for a meeting. <laughs> Once again, somebody walking around a loose puck there, a little bit of a rebound. You know, the goaltender's got all that equipment on, you know, there's a little stick on it, not going to hurt him, but yet they, that unwritten rule. Nice play at the blue line by Carson. Keep Great that play puck to keep in. that puck in. Carson again couldn't keep it this time. Cawthorn has it going down ice. Carson's going to chase it down. On it is Hempel. Hempel just dumps it right back out. Here comes Carson Staken as he's coming through the zone. Three on three, but got to find some space. There's a shot on for. Oh, what a great stop. Nice play. Nice pass out front. Did the right thing there. Threw the puck out front. But uh, good save there by Liam Cook. Oh, Cook just uh, got himself set in that. Well, you're going to see he knows the puck is coming back and does and gets it. Covers as much net as he possibly can. And uh, there's a case where I think the puck hit him rather than yeah, he stopped he was, it. He was already down, but down on the ice here. But that's, hey. all, that's all about playing goal now. You get yourself in position to let the puck hit you rather than you make the play to stop it. So, uh, which makes sense. Tailing after it. Tailing in his own zone. Decides to dump it around this side. Puck picked up along the boards by Aiken. And A Newt has it. Newt coming across the ice. Nice little toe drag. Couldn't get the puck on goal. Then he tried to center and was knocked down by Brock Locking. Tailing again, fires it wide. Back to even strength now. That's good. Good penalty kill by the attack, a junior attack, as they uh, killed off a four minute minor on a head check. And dump it out, stopped. Gloved, put down back on the ice. Tailing. Brown gets the puck, bouncing around. Brown gets it down. And then he couldn't. The guy lost his footing and then he actually hit the goaltender puck. The net came off the moorings and. Um, Nothing happening after that. That's good. Well, actually, it was the defensive player that knocked him off his balance, so. Woolwich down one to nothing. Pretty well half this period in the books. In behind the goal, and that's Smith as he tries to get it along the board. Pass stolen by Gibbons, and it's offside. Although I find that hard to believe. That was <laughs> that was close. 
by the reaction of the Owen Sound bench. I don't know if they agree with the call, but oh well. The guys with the whistles. They still do that job a lot better than we do. That's right. <laughs> Puck off the boards. Kid has it. Got a chance. Hall stays with him. Wasn't a hard shot. Liam Cook had no trouble whatsoever. I think it's kind of cool they leave the shots up on goal uh, on the score clock game. <laughs> on the last game. On the last attack game. Yeah. Face off in the zone. To the right. The goaltender. Cook. Two on one. Bennett. Bennett. Little back pass. And oh, good chance. As Gibbons had a chance to rifle it. Oh. Puck back through the slot area just in behind. Bennett. There's a deflection. Nice scores. Play. Nice play. Hall oh. gets a puck from the blue line. Gets his second point of the afternoon. And it's deflected in front. Great tip in front of the net. I'm not too sure who got that. But uh, uh, Hall, same thing, same as the goal he scored, right? Keeps the puck in at the blue yeah. line. Steps up. Fires it on the net. Bennett, I think, is in front. McVicker. McVicker. Nice goal. Oh, I got to stick on. It's 2 nothing. That's a big goal right now because of the fact that it was so, so close. It was anybody's game. But that makes the mountain just a little higher to climb. Puck bouncing around outside. Laycock at the blue line. Just bump, dumps it into the corner. On that puck real fast is Thielen. Thielen dumps it off the boards and... Doesn't get it out of the zone. Little back pass out in front. Boy, a whole bunch of sticks flying right there. <laughs> Hold on to your stick, I think the name of the game is. Scheifer in the zone, letting it at the point. Finally, Hypo just backs off on the side, chasing after Cawthorn. He's knocked off the puck. Kept in by, by Taylor. Coming out of the zone, Reed Solomon. Solomon up through center ice. He just back passes it off the boards and chases in after. Going to try and send it out front. Little pass and then didn't get back to the blue line. Evan Woods. Boy, a lot of noise happened down there, so I'm another, not sure. Another charge. Now who's heading to the penalty box? Oh, blind. Owen Sound is going to go on the power play for the first time. Face off deep. I don't know why Laycock was being told to go leave. Yeah, I thought uh, for a second there, I thought it was Laycock that was going to the penalty box but well I know the bench Brad Hackett was not happy with that call <laughs> face off Carson Guido puck goes back outside and then chase down Clagus in his own zone back pass cross I gotta watch those passes Clagus has it bringing it through center ice Clagus gotta find a hole can't get it there, and then the Newt just knocks it right down the ice. Chasing after Travis Brown, Brown in behind his own goal. Brown's going to get up ahead of steam to the neutral zone. Brown tried to make a move to come inside, couldn't. Puck is along the wall, trying to deal with it, can't. Ah, oh, he couldn't keep it in. Clagus. I just gets the puck knocked back right onto his stick. Brown Johnson picks it up, flips it off the wall. Right now, the junior attacks power play looks a little anemic. Good penalty kill by Woolwich. Carson in his own zone. Well, oh, right up on the stick. A tail in as he's come out, pardon me, staken. Clagus. Little back pass along the boards. Ooh, picked that off. Pass. That pass is right. 
Picked off by number eight, Aiken. Attack coming in on the zone. That's Travis Brown. Brown, there's the shot. Good stop by Bites. Nice, pa nice pass out front there. Well, with something you said, they were a little bit, uh, but they're starting to put the passes on the sticks now and things are starting to change a bit. Maddox Johnson probably wished he got a little bit more on that shot. Either way, shot on net. Nice save by the Woolwich goaltender. That's the first real good scoring chance they've had in this power play. Puck just dumped down the ice and it's going to be a shot on goal. If that was, uh, here's Hall. Hall's got two points today. He scored a goal and he assisted on one. Gibbons through center. Gibbons trying to take it off past the defense. Gets a shot steered into the corner by Bites. And that was picked up by Sprader. Killing it off, they did, and uh, good job by Woolwich. One shot on goal. Aiken has it. Offside, didn't call it. Kerr coming through center ice. Kerr overskates it. Back to Gibbons. Boy. Along the left wing, turning it inside. Draw by his lonesome. It's number 17, Fishman. That's it. And they score. I thought he had that for a second there, but it must have popped out. Cause... I thought it was... Uh... He will watch it on replay. That's number 17, Fishman. He sees carries the puck, and there's Fishman again. There's a little shot. Oh, and Frank popped just out to Freed there. Looks like number nine. Or Freed, is that Freed or Freeder? And um, nine is Freeder. 2-1. Two, 2-1. Two one. Two to one. We knew that this game was going to be close. Whoop. Puck along the boards, and nobody gets it out. Here comes... Cawthorn, Cawthorn can just shoot it and chase. <laughs> Chilling, there's a loose puck comes right off to go up beside the net. Looking for that B shore bounce. Oh, that's for sure. Shot back into the corner. Schaefer's gonna try and track it down. Locking was there. Cawthorn and we're getting a stop and play. And we're getting another penalty. Another charge. charge. That seems to be the... Uh... And it is going to be the visitors that are going to the penalty box. Number six, I believe, or 16, Evan Woods. Yep, Evan Woods heading to the penalty box. Seems to be the call of the day for this game, charging. Well, they're taking runs at people. You can't, you gotta make sure when you hit them that you give them that step and a half and you don't run. Face off, Bennett. Wins the draw, gets it back. McVicker off a leg. Back to the blue line. Reed Solomon into the slot. Back to Solomon again at the blue line. Solomon into the corner. Solomon looking for a lane. He has the second, third chance he's got. He just fired it and knocked up number 19, letting it stick. Then they fire it down the ice. Laycock. To this side, Laycock just twisted around and then didn't give much of a pass to Brown. Brown wasting time in his own zone on this power play. Long lead pass, but Smith just knocked it off and couldn't get a hold of it, and then finally does get it down the ice. Brown in his own zone. Good forecheck by Staken. McVicker tried to control that pass one-handed, couldn't. In on goal, Staken has a chance in on goal and they're just steered off into the corner by Cook. Very calm and cool collected, did that. Bennett coming up by, Bennett into, into the slot, not controlling the pass and then knocked out down the ice. And second period, 155 remaining, 2-1 Owen Sound. They had a 2-0 lead. 
They've got a power play, 32 seconds remaining. McVicker down the right wing. McVicker tried to back pass it out off the skate of Hempel. Back to Hall. Hall just heads it at the end, knocked by the blocker. As Bites makes the save, loose puck in the slot. Stolen by Shouldice. Shouldice can't get it in front. Give it back to Hall. He knows what to do with it. Hall stops, gets it right on goal. Boy, he's accurate, that kid. Yep, you know what? Good thing there, right? The, he changed his direction a little bit there, got another shot on net, and got it right through a few legs. And Well, he already has a goal and assist to show for that today. Show the Blake Bice had to be good on that one and knew it was coming from the point. And it was deflected in front, too, which you've made it a better save. So that's the toughest thing to do is to get the face. Tack on the puck, and that's Shouldice. Shouldice twists and turns. And that's Latielin. Tealin. There's the shot again, and then it bites, gets it. Shouldice is uh, having a good game this afternoon, too. I've so. mentioned his name a lot again today. Yeah. Penalty kill, power play, both ends of the ice. No goals, but uh, it is a factor. Shot, some interference in front, I thought, no call. Hall has it, takes it in behind his own goal. Hall stops, just dumps it off the board. Didn't get far enough, though. And finally, Hall gets it again. Hall has it, comes across the blue line, takes the shot. Looked like I got pretty close to the mask. Boy, oh, he's got a good shot, that kid, and he doesn't. And it's fairly hard. He doesn't, the wrist shot and just a little snapper, but nothing really. Kerr, Kerr takes a shot oh. off a of body. And yeah, I think the referee thought he caught it. I think, yeah, I agree. Or it hit him in the mask. I think it did. I thought it was off the glove, but it was obviously. Bites appears to be okay. Shot in front, stop by Till, and then it comes back out this side. Here come Schaefer. He's down the right wing. Schaefer looking to the little block by Brown as he got down. On this side, Cunningham. And there goes the horn. Two periods in the books here, and uh, we've got one to go. Junior attack up two to one. Uh, if that had been the two nothing score, I would think they had the game pretty well in hand, but Wildcats from Woolwich are giving them everything they can handle. And of course, we're gonna get a stop and play here while they flood the ice. It's one thing about this uh, yeah, U16 hockey, uh, you end up with a flood between the second and third. And the coaches go in there and dissect the first two periods and figure out what they can do <laughs> to start it, so. I think both both coaches, probably my guess is going to bring up the power play. You know, neither team's been effective on the power play so far, and they've, they've certainly both had their chances on the power play. And for Woolwich, I think really they got to be disappointed. Right? They had that four-minute power play, 2-1 hockey game right now, and, and uh, you get to the end of the game, if you lose by one goal, right, I think you got to let you look back on that four-minute power play. You just really couldn't generate anything for the entire four minutes. Well, neither one of the power plays have been too... too no, uh, no, no, um, neither power play at all. It seems like uh, the best four skaters are on the ice and they manage to control it and manage to keep the puck to the outside and make it difficult to get into slot area exactly. or a good scoring opportunity. So uh, both teams are struggling a bit on the power play. And uh, But you're right, that four-minute... That four-minute minor is a chance to make hay when the sun shines. Exactly. Yep. Nothing to show. So I know it's. Uh, but again, too, it's a good contest. It's uh, when you got a game this close and it's two to one. What are you talking to your kids about when you go inside there? Well, I, I think uh, for, I just talked about the power play there, right? And um, a tight game. You want to make sure you don't do anything. You know. I was going to say you do anything stupid, but, you know, you don't want a retaliation penalty. That's the first thing, right? you got to talk to the kids about, hey, listen, we got to stay out of the penalty box. I think you described that right if you're going to get right. a retaliation yeah, yeah, so, right, you, you want to stay out of the penalty box because eventually the power play is going to click. 
and yeah. it's going to work. So you don't want to give your opponent that opportunity. So you've got to talk about, you know, it's a tight game, um, no mistakes, you know, try not to cough up the puck. Probably touch a little bit on the passes, right? Let's try and get the passes on where passes are a little bit behind uh, so far throughout the game. And, and just, yeah, just if you get that power play opportunity, move the puck around, get the defenders moving, and try and get some pucks on net and look for a rebound. Well, it's a... Uh and that's a, the whole key to the game too. Is a, a, Owen Sound can score, yeah. and you cannot give them opportunities that, that especially Woolwich, can't. And, and Woolwich can move. They've got some they some guy kids that can really move, but it just seems like the attacks seem to be have got the number because every time they get they get one good pass, one clean pass, and the second pass is off a skate, off a stick. And it's about that which you talked earlier about good stick good good lane coverage and all that kind of stuff and the attack seem to be doing that really well exactly. yeah. yep. I think Coach Brown probably talked a little bit about uh, you know as we talk about getting the puck on the net right uh, we've mentioned a lot about uh, Hall right defenseman for Owen Sound there that's a perfect example that's what you got to reference in the dressing room right talk about Hall two pucks on net though he's had more on net but the first two basically he threw on net one goal he didn't see yep. went right in the net and the second one a great tip in front by McVicker oh that's just it just goes you know get the puck on the net right you got an opportunity put it on the net and good things will happen and Bites is playing very well for, yeah, for absolutely because on some level they have been doing that but it hasn't been consistent right. it's been there's been no extreme pressure at any time they get in there they get a shot and then they're out and they're, yep. or he stops it and they get a face off so uh yeah but i mean there's, there's a whole bunch of things you can build on by by both coaches in, the, in these two periods but I think, in my humble opinion, I, I believe that uh, the attack have, have uh, played more intensely than, than, than more, which I was looking at to describe it more than. Uh, they just seem to be a little more into the game um, and yet not being rewarded for their good play. No, I, I, I agree. I agree. So we'll see what the third period brings here. Um, hopefully some good end-to-end -end hockey. Not as many penalties, and uh, as we were to flavor of the day, charging. That seems to be the, <laughs> the call of the day here. Three or four charging calls, and and you know I, I think that's weighing a little bit on on the Woolwich bench as well. They had a player get hurt early in the game, right? Hard check along the boards. We could hear the coach from uh, Woolwich yelling up here at the referees after one of the charging calls. Or no, sorry, that was the four minute yep. head contact. He was he was after the referees. Felt that that was at least the third time that it happened to one of his players so um, maybe got him off the game a little bit but hopefully he, he dials it back in and gets the coach and the kids and, and um, focus on trying to get a win here well we're going to take a short break and uh, we're going to come back and uh, bring you the third period of our hockey game here on uh, Rogers TV uh, we hope that uh, you've enjoyed the telecast so far and you've already telecast all, all today so we're going to be back right here with Weekend in the Rink on Rogers TV the type who would keep going or stop it's not easy to stop when you have an addiction legalizing cannabis won't stop addiction it trivializes its consumption let's be vigilant if you need help visit portage.ca bipolar disorder substance addiction bulimia OCD want to swap <sighs> One in two, a flip of a coin. That's the same chance we'll experience a mental illness by the time we're 40. A dollar a day can help change those odds. 
Hi, I'm David Shearman, host of Politically Speaking. Join me for my next show where my guest will be Kevin Eccles, the new warden of Gray County. Politically Speaking on Rogers TV. George Chapman with uh, Ken Williams here at uh, Weekend of the Rink at uh, the Bayshore Community Center. And got a couple more passes on the ice, and we're going to bring you the third period of uh, this game between uh, Wildcats and Woolwich and, of course, the Owensown Junior Attack. And again, folks, just uh, if you're enjoying our telecast, I'll tell you something. One of the things the most that, that part of the reason why I do this, I, I'm in the rink and I can watch these kids live. And... Uh, uh, I've been down even on days that I, my kids, uh, or my, my, I'm not doing Rogers to watch games. But there's the attack, aren't they? The senior attack team, the junior A club, not the only ones that play hockey. Come no. on down either the Julie or come on down here and watch these kids play. They would love. We've got 3,200 seats, and let me tell you, there's lots of room for you. And over the Christmas holidays, there's going to be hockey being played here at both of these arenas. And I'm not sure exactly what the schedules are, but if it's anything, that there'll be all kinds of so come on down and watch these kids they'd love to have you and they represent your community they they go out put those jerseys on into these arenas and they put on a good show and behave and show or their pride in their community so show your pride in your community and watch them play watch them absolutely yeah always always good doesn't matter what age group uh if you have a chance to get out come out and watch uh, the little kids come out and watch the the U16s, whatever you can. Can it watch some girls hockey, some local league hockey? I mean, there's a lot of good hockey happening around Owen Sound and the surrounding areas. Oh, even uh, even uh, when you, you want to follow your teams out to uh, just check the schedules. And uh, when the local leagues play in Shallow Lake and Port Elgin, Wyarton, well, Lions Head. So they, uh, they, Durham, they move around, Collingwood. So, uh, they, and those kids are now representing the community with, and they wear those jerseys with pride. And, and uh, um, we have a great um, organization here in Owensown. We mentioned it earlier before, and the support that these kids get is amazing with the volunteers, the coaches, the, the moms, the parents, the, um, each, I think each, each team, and there's a lead parent that does all this. Yeah. It, it makes the phone calls. And it doesn't, sure. doesn't happen without the volunteers, without uh, the parents, right? I mean, that's that's uh, it, it. Just doesn't happen, right? If that, so if that group's not out helping. And when you were a coach, when was the last time you cut up an orange for the between periods? <laughs> you know, <what> I mean? <laughs> <laughs> no, exactly. Yeah, it's no matter what sport it is, right? Yeah. It's uh, whether it's field lacrosse, soccer, baseball, hockey, and stuff like that. If it's not for the parents and the volunteers and the the people running the rink and the referees and that, then uh, your kids don't get to enjoy any of those wonderful games. Well, something else that I mean that goes on in our community too is a program that's being run by a couple of major corporations, of course, uh, Mark Brook Barrels and Canadian Tire, and they have a Jump Start program. If your kid wants to play hockey, you can call or the, one of those stores, and they will put you on to the person that's responsible for that, and they will get you in to play hockey and. Or, or lacrosse, or basket, or or uh, minor basketball, or wherever, and, and provide equipment for it. And uh, so you don't have to sit down and say, we can't afford it. And there are ways that, that can get you into the rink as a hockey player, or onto the baseball diamond, or the soccer field. Uh, and they will they will gladly help get you guys, you know, uh, your your kids involved. And. Uh, um, I think on some level that's important and you see it's advertised and any money that's raised locally stays local it doesn't go national well, so some good, yeah some good programs if you want to get your kids out and get involved and and uh introduce them to the sport ah it's a great sport here we are start of third periods everybody at even strength there's the face off staking Bennett has a hold of it. Puck gets dived. Pardon me, that's Gibbons, and he just dumped it off into the corner. Puck bouncing around. Laycock back on the point, forechecking. Here's McVicker. McVicker scored that beautiful goal. That was that tip in front of the net. Reason why Owen Sound is up. But of course, the big story is that young defenseman 
It got to keep getting that puck on the net all the time. Cole Hall. Yep. yep. Mr. Hall. Own sound right now. Doing a good job of keeping that puck inside the zone. Chasing after right now is McCarthy. McCarthy can't get the puck on net, but comes back out. McVicker has it. He's knocked down. Puck's in the neutral zone. Laycock. Boy, you got to hit him somebody pretty hard to get that kid off the skates. <laughs> He's a big, stocky young man. And a few muscles where I'm not even sure where I have muscles. <laughs> Smith. In his own don't dumps it on the side, kept in at the blue line by Brock Locking. Locking pinches in and then dumps it back, and he takes off. Nice move to cover him. There's the shot right in on, and Bites makes the save. A couple of good scoring opportunities there for Owen Sound. First of all, that puck would have thrown out front. Missed opportunity there, but good shot on net afterwards. And, and as you mentioned, Gordon, nice save by Blake Bites. Nathan Gibbons played that so well because he dropped back to the point to cover when, when locking turned, when it pinched in. There's another and, shot from Hall back in the point, right on net, blocked or saved by Bites. Bites is having a good afternoon. This game could be a lot higher if it wasn't for his place career. Overskated that puck. Newt has it in his own zone. Cunningham. Keegan Cunningham gets knocked down but kept that puck in for a brief period. Puck off the skate. Chasing down the wing, McCawthorn couldn't control it. Chasing down the ice is Fishman. Fishman takes the shot. Good stop. As Cook, I think, got a piece got of it. A piece of that up and over the glass or into the netting. Then awful close, you're going to see this is number 10, Kid. And he's going to get the shot. Pardon me, no, it's number seven. Here's a nice save. 17, Brendan Fishman. Gonna take that face off against Clagus. Wins the draw. Puck comes outside the nice little lead pass. Well, just couldn't put it on the that. stick. And it's gonna be icing. There's a difference in minor hockey and some junior hockey, of course, right? That wouldn't have been icing if we were watching the attack tonight, but minor hockey, it goes over that uh, goes over that goal line. It's an icing. Ty Shoulder just missed that pass as he was heading down the left wing. Nice, nice play actually to get that puck up ice to, to give a shot. I'm not sure the defenseman they got. Taylor takes the shot blocked in front by Brown as he was in the lane. Clay goes after him behind the net. Brown goes after it again. Travis Brown flips it out through center. Taylor's on his stick. Taylor cross ice off Shoulder ice. Shoulder ice again. Shoulders with the pass, driving a handle on one hand that can't get it into the zone. Kid finally gets it out, gets it on the snake, stick of Fishman, and then off into the corner. Plagas, little back pass up along the boards. Stopped by Carson. Carson has a chance, tried to get it towards the goal. Carson can't, but who's got the puck? Plagas. Actually, that's Brown. Brown coming up the ice. Brown. Tries to throw drag, throw drag it and can't get it in. Smith has it. Little back pass that almost got picked off. Lettinen, Woods on the wing, knocked off his stick. Lettinen again gets it over to Smith. Smith has it and he just fires it in, but not a lot on that shot. And then fired into the corner by Schaefer. Wanted his Ginda. And Smith, he just fires it back in. It's going to be offside, but the attack managed to get it out. Lead pass off the boards. Just missed Gibbons coming on this side to Carson. Carson in behind the net. Smith. Smith has it. Up along the far wing, tries to get it up to Schaefer. Attack, keep it in the zone. Gibbons. He can't control it. Bennett tried to get it through. Couldn't do it. Woods has it. Get, Gibbons is on him. Puck coming on this side. Brown keeps it in. Makes a move around letting it. Brown getting hammered again. Tries to center it out in front. Oh, just missed it with Gibbons. That puck laying on the ice, it would have happened, but it was a high pass. Trying to deflect it in. Couldn't get it there. 
attack game with some pressure. Puck stolen by Brown, and then Lettinen picks up the loose puck, comes up ice. He's at the end of a long shift, and then they're going to get Cook to squeeze that puck and call it a... Easy save there for Cook. Well, wish all of them were like that. <laughs> but I think you're right. Yeah, just end of the shift. Everybody's a little tired, a little gassed out there. Once again, put it on the net. But an easy save. Quick pass, quick release. Got it out. Cunningham. Shot it in. Laycock on the point. But Woolwich Wildcats pick it up. Little pass just off the of body, and I guess I guess Cawthorn was positioned so he could block it. There's a little hit at the blue line. That's interference and no call. Newt, at least from my vantage point, that does. Sometimes we do that. We call the penalty from up here, and the referees don't see it as we yeah, do. They don't agree with us. McCarthy, McCarthy fires it off the backboards in behind the net, chasing after it, blocking. Blocking didn't get to it. McCarthy again. From some stuff, a little bit extra. Now we're, we're getting a penalty call, and it's called by the back official. Somebody's getting a head call. And it's going to be... Number eight. Wesley Aitken. Face off deep. I believe we're going to the right of goaltender. Blake Bites, Aiken heading into the penalty box. Head check, just a two minute minor. Face off already and then fired down the ice. Gonna be by, oh, we gotta watch those bouncing pucks. <laughs> Some goaltenders just, they hate it to have it bounce. They, 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 anything, but don't bounce. Yeah, a little fluky one. I'm sure that's the stuff that they have yeah, nightmares about. Uh, most goalies will tell you the p bouncing puck is the worst to handle because you, I don't know if it's because of the bulky equipment or whatever, from the attack through center. Johnson tried to put it on the stick of Cawthorn and Cawthorn, pardon me, Shouldice, and Shouldice couldn't get the pass. There's the shot off the body in front. Kerr has it. Kerr, Shouldice at the blue line. In behind the net. Back into the slot, and Freedy gets it out. Hall in behind the net, protecting the puck, that one-handed stick. Hall has it, gets it into the slot area. There's a backhand shot deflected in front by Johnson, and he couldn't get it by Bites. Kerr in behind the net, going to do the same thing. Comes back, stops. Looks like he's going to do that, <laughs> I thought for sure. Hall, oh. puck is blocked. Chasing after it, Fishman. Fishman coming down the ice. There's the shot. No! That one in. Oh. That, I, now, I thought the first one went in. But once again, I want to stress, Gordon and I are not down at the ice level. But that's unfortunate, the way it bounced off of the Owen Sound player coming back. Was that crossbar and right back out? Oh no, that's, yeah, two Owen Sound, boy. I know that it, feeling. I thought that, I don't know if there's a chance to see the overhead of that one. I, either way, it doesn't matter, it's 2-2. Two, two. Well, it would be nice to tell everybody that first one went in and the second one didn't count, so. Might make the Owen Sound player feel a little bit better. 2-2 two, two on one of the most weirdest goals we've seen in a long time, and... Uh, oh. Here comes Clegus through center. Still on the power play. They got a short end of goal that time. Back to Brown. Brown's going to get it at the point. Gets the shot off a stick in front. Into the corner. Bennett has it. He dumps it back. McVicker trying to get it down. Bennett trying to take his man up. Puck is bouncing. It's anybody's game now. Seven minutes to go. We go in the 
Well, we could be going into overtime or just a tie. Just a tie. So we don't have to worry about it. Last time we were get ties was in that tournament, so. That's right, the uh, regional silver stick. Yep, Brown. Couldn't by get by Lettman. Woolwich. Trying to knock that puck out. Off Brown and then, or McVicker, pardon me. Then knocked down. Boy, that's another hit. It's getting a little. Get a little. Oh. Some body contact out there. Plagueis in his own zone. Just a little dump pass off. Gibbons along the boards. Broken stick. Somebody broke his stick. Gibbons doesn't know his stick's broken. We should have had a penalty on that. I That's there should have been a penalty there. Yep. Yeah. I got a penalty for that in, high, in, a, in an old timer game because I had a wooden That's stick. That's the penalty. The trip. We're going to get the trip. Here we're going to see the, over, uh, the overhead shot. And uh, this is uh, Liam Cook getting set. And the first shot. Here it comes. Yep, off the well, crossbar. Good thing I left that $20 bill in my pocket, Gordon. Yeah. <laughs> I almost took the bat. 50-50 <laughs> 50 chance. Timeout, 5-51. We're going to – both coaches are talking about what they have to do in, in this uh, – of course, Coach Brown uh, – Gonna die on up. They basically got to say, "Look, we got 5:51. We got a chance to do it." The attack have played a really solid game for two periods. You got a flute goal that got this thing tied up, but uh, you know it was uh, one of those things. It was a smart play by 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 Fishman because he knew that. I think he knew that uh, Hall was going to put it towards the net, and he moved out to him quickly, got into the lane, blocked it. And that started it all, and that was a smart play. Face off. 5.51 remaining on this side. Cawthorn. Cawthorn has it again. Marcus Carthorn takes the shot and it just whistled wide. And then the rebound. Back on this side to Cawthorn. Tried to center it. It's in the slot. Couldn't get it there. Locking at the blue line. Locking. Cross ice pass. They're on the power play. Solomon in behind. Got to make this. Got to make it smart. That's a nice thing. You know, boy, everything seems to come back to the power play here, right? If you talk about the 2 2 game. Inability to score in the power play, and of course, a shorthanded goal for Woolwich while Owen Sound was on the power play. I mean, Owen Sound's got, I mean, they're doing the right thing here. Woolwich isn't aggressive on the penalty kill at all. They just box it up and move around, so, and, and that's it. They don't force Owen Sound at all. This Owen Sound's got to move the puck around a little bit, a little bit quicker, look for that opportunity and get the puck on the net. They're trying to basically just to, like you said, they're trying to get the lanes covered and yeah. You've got to move the puck. Yeah, they are not aggressive, like I say, at all. You're going to see them here. Maybe if they set up, they're going to. There's Gibbons. Takes a shot. Loose puck. He bites. Put his big glove over it. That's what you got to do. you got to be aggressive and get in on goal. And uh, make the goalie move. The uh, 55, 59 seconds left in the power play. Um, you got to move that. Oh, I'm not sure he should have done that. I said he should have forwarded the puck. They weren't even anywhere near him. Yep. But uh, he had it knocked in the last time anybody white got near him. <laughs> that was one of the weirdest goals I've seen in a yeah, while. No, it's, especially, you know, first, I think first and second attack player went by. It was the third one that weird bounce in the net. And behind the goal there, they come. There's a shot off the side of the net. Hall gonna run down and chase it down. They gotta really move that puck. I think Hall's gonna just bring it. He's gonna turn the Jets on. Here he comes through the neutral zone. Hall 
Freeman right on top of him. Tailing him behind the goal, grabs it. Kept in at the blue line. By Cawthorn, and There's he's another dumb. trip. Yep, give him, I'd give him the puck. There the call. Wait a minute. Woolwich is going to get the penalty. As we can hear Mark in the truck telling us that uh, Owen Sound's got a chance to win now with the uh, with the uh, the period uh, winding down. With uh, right now it's a three on two, a five on three, but. Uh, Oh, nice play by Brown to keep that puck from going down the ice. Back to the point. There's the shot. Just whistled that right. Lettner's back on the ice. Shoulder ice. Back to Brown. Brown's just going to wire that one off Lettner's stick. Nice play. By number eight, and that was Carson Guidon just to keep that puck in. Huxley, there's a the shot off. Oh, just missed. I don't know how that didn't go in. Where oh, I think it just hit a or? stick, just a touch, deflected wide again. And that's Johnson getting. Bennett Brown back to the point. Clagus gets a shot off a body. And Fishman just knocks it down the ice. Fishman, Brandon Fishman has played so well for Woolwich. They have called his name a lot. So, nice play by Kidd to steal it. And Cawthorn comes back with it. And then Cawthorn's checked. Having difficulty skating it up the ice. In behind the net, picking it up is Guidon. Guidon just headmans it. Gets it up to Brown. Brown's got a chance. And Brown gets the shot. Stopped by Bites. Loose puck in front, finally got away. Here comes Jacob Newt. Newt's just going to waste time, get it up the ice. Cawthorn just dumps it back into his own zone. 23 seconds left here in this power play. The attack has some time left on this. In on goal, there's a shot just wide off a leg. Thrown around this side, couldn't keep it in. Was was Marcus Cawthorn? Lake uh, to Cawthorn. Penalty is over. Two minutes left in this contest. Fluky goal so far has cost the attack a chance at winning this hockey game because they were up two to one when that happened. Smith in his own zone. Smith. Looking for McCarthy on the left wing. Gets him there. Nice stop by Laycock as he leveled his man. McCarthy couldn't get by him. That was, that's textbook hockey. Nice play there. Oh. Minute and a half left here. Both teams making some changes. I wouldn't want to run into that Laycock, I'll tell you. <laughs> yeah. yeah, Nate's a solid <laughs> kid, that's for he, sure. He would hurt. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, when I was 20 years old, I wouldn't want to run into that kid. <laughs> Very solid player. Face off deep. Comes back to the point. Taylor gets the shot, just whistles it wide. McVicker passed it through, couldn't get it up to Bennett, and Bennett takes his guy into the corner. <laughs> there was a little bit of finish your check on that one, I think it was. No one set. I think the penalty is going to go. One, and another one for Bennett. He, yeah, he's going to get the two minutes there. Lucky he didn't get another one there for just smacking the, well, little tap with his stick. Shaking his head. Boy, Wasn't those Bullwitch fans make an awful lot of noise underneath, don't they? <laughs> they bang on uh, the... Banging on something down there. Timeout, Woolwich. they got a minute and eight seconds here. Draw something up for the power play. Face off, of course, will be down in the Owen Sound end. Well, the Don't Sound's got to draw it up too, and they, they got to make sure that they're that they. Yeah, they're not talking at all on the Don't Sound bench. I'm kind of surprised by that. Thought maybe Brown is chatting. Oh, he's directing who's going to be out on the ice there. Well, they're trying to draw it up. You can see uh, Brad Hackett 
And uh, if you're on sound, you just want to, you know, keep the puck to the outside here. Keep Woolwich to the outside. If you get a chance to get the puck down the ice, you got to make sure you lean on your stick and get the puck down the ice. You don't want anything soft as you try and get into your zone to allow Woolwich the opportunity to keep it in. Got to make sure uh, two things. One, you got to preserve the tie. Secondly, you got the only way you're going to win this thing is to get a shorthanded goal. But right now, you do not want to give up that goal. Faceoff, Staken gets the puck back to the point. Hypo has a chance to put it inside. There's another big stop by Cook. Cook has to be good in this next one. 59 seconds. Faceoff back to the point again. Hempel has it. Gets it back into the corner, chasing after it. It's Travis Brown. Brown takes his man along the boards. Brown again comes back. And Hypo just knocks it down the ice, chasing after it. It's Gibbons. You got a chance to pick it up. Gibbons, we can get a hold of it. He had somebody with him. Fishman off a of body. Fishman passes it back up front. Just missed the breaking man into the slot here. There's a shot saved by Cook. Time is running down in the corner with Staken trying to center it out in front, then knocked out. Hempel keeps it in. Brown just going to fire it down That'll the ice. It. Smart thing to do. Four seconds to go. And there's the horn, 2-2 two -two tie here with Woolwich. And his own town under 16. And it was quite a, quite a contest. And unfortunately, we're just hoping that uh, Connor Goble is okay. He left, uh, left the game with a wrist injury earlier on and uh, hope that it's not going to be season ending. Was, uh, yeah, you hope so. Didn't you look to too healthy. So, before uh, Christmas. Well, it doesn't matter what time of the year. You yeah. hate to see that happen. To, yeah. To the young fellow, but hopefully, uh, yeah, hopefully he's all right. So, uh, yeah, so do I. It's just uh, one of those fluke things. This <laughs> this game was tied up on a fluke goal. It was one of the craziest ones we've seen this year. Um, puck off the crossbar. We watched it overhead. We saw the crossbar. And uh, I'm not sure whether he thought it was in because he was pretty laissez-faire with, with that loose puck. Could, and, yeah, uh, you know what? You might be right there, Gord. He, maybe he thought that original shot... I thought the original shot went yeah. in. So, uh, well, not me. I but, knew. Uh, you knew. <laughs> so, a great replay I, there I, from I, Mark. Yeah. Put me wrong. And <laughs> <laughs> I knew you. Like, like, so. like I did. You know, my glasses aren't that good. <laughs> uh, it, yeah, that was uh, it was a unique play in the fence. Uh, Fisherman went in on goal. And, well, the play actually started at the blue line where he anticipated the fact that Kerr, or, or was, uh, Hall was going to fire the puck, which he did. He blocked it off blocked. the shin pads. Then it was a race to the other end of the ice. Got the shot away, hit the crossbar, which we thought was already in. And then the back, it was the third guy back that third knocked the back. puck into the net. Like, oh, I'm going to get a hold. And, and, and I know what it's like to put it in your net by your, and I know how that <laughs> yeah, kid no. feels. Yeah, he'll feel horrible, but... So that that kid uh, that that, I, that happened to me in a, in the league in Toronto and uh, uh, when I played hockey and I I went to clear it and I shot it and I had that much that much between the, <laughs> the goalie put it in the net and you feel shame and yeah. go to the penalty box but uh, great game this afternoon uh, full marks uh, I know on sound junior attack would uh, rather got the win two to one but ended up being two two. Good hockey game to watch down here at the arena. Good hockey game to watch on Rogers uh, TV and probably see a rerun maybe tomorrow afternoon. But uh, uh, with a pleasure working with Ken Williams. Thank I'm Gord Chapman. Thank you. All the best to you this holiday season. Of course, Merry Christmas to those and uh, happy holidays and happy Hanukkah to those who applies to. And also happy holidays. I uh, hope everybody uh, is, has a safe time. Please don't drink and drive. Uh, remember that uh, it's better to drive alive than not arrive at all so please uh, get a designated driver if you're gonna do whatever it's really important merry christmas again ken thank merry you christmas so much to you. thank you to roger on behalf of rogers this has been a rogers telecast on rogers tv
This is Rogers TV. The opinions expressed in the following programs are those of the... Hello and welcome to Mental Health Matters. I'm your host Courtney Gideon and today we are talking about returning to school and some of the mental health challenges this can present in our youth. Anxious feelings are normal and expected during times of transition and change. This is especially true for children and teens going back to school and for first timers starting kindergarten. This transition can be stressful and disruptive for the entire family. But how has COVID and the other challenges our children have faced in the past two years affected feelings of going back to school? And how will our children react while they are there? Here to share her story of helping her child through some of these feelings is Kim Shrilov. Kim, thank you so much for being here today. Thank you for having me. So it's been quite a journey uh, yes. with your son, mm -hmm. and I think this time of year stirs up a lot of feelings for parents and for kids. Mm -hmm. But what was this time of year like for you guys going through this with your son, and what has that mental health journey been like for you? This was always a hard time for him. Um, everything was new. Sometimes it was a new school, a new classroom, a new teacher, new friends. Yes. Everything was new, and it, this was always a very difficult time of year. And he was leaving me. Right. Um, home was our safe place. Yes. So leaving home, going back into the school where he knew that there were a lot of triggers, a lot of, created a lot of anxious feelings. Wow, okay. And so he's somebody, did he always suffer with anxiety? How did this begin? This began probably with the death of my mother at the age of five for Chris. Okay. Um, looking back, there was probably always some anxiety there, but he was young enough we didn't recognize it uh, to be much of a problem. Okay. Um, when my mom passed away, that is when things really kicked into high gear for him. and. Uh, that's when we realized this was anxiety. Okay, and so what were some of the presenting behaviors that you noticed in him? The first thing was throwing up. <laughs> um, everywhere we went, anytime I had to leave, he would throw up. Um, he, anger, frustration, acting out, lashing out. Um, he always worked really hard to hold it together at school. Yeah. But then coming home is when he would let loose. Right. Yeah. Okay. So throwing up, you mentioned, was one of the things. Yeah. Um, so it's interesting because my stepdaughter has anxiety. And for a long time, she would say she has stomach aches, yeah. right? And we just thought, oh, she's allergic to something. Or did you go through anything like that with him? Or you just thought, oh, you know, maybe it's just, you didn't necessarily think it was something related to mental health. Yeah, I didn't. As I say, this kind of all came about around the time my mom passed away. So when we were preparing for the visitation, getting pictures together, that's when Chris started throwing up. And okay. I just thought, this is really bad timing. I don't need this right now. Yes. Um, but then it continued. It didn't go away. And as he transitioned back to school, and he was going to Cubs at the time, Anything he had to go to, he said, I'm going to throw up. Wow. And most of the time he did. Right. So we would often go to school with a bucket because he said, I'm going to throw up. Wow. So that was the biggest thing for us. Okay. Uh, we couldn't go anywhere without that happening. Wow. Yeah. Were there any sleep disruptions or was that part of the struggle at all? Yep. Yep, definitely lots of sleep disruptions. Couldn't sleep and then lack of sleep made the anxiety worse and it was just a vicious cycle. Right, exactly. Yeah. So at what point did you say, okay, we need to get some help? When he told me he didn't want to live like this anymore. Mm -hmm. And he was about, probably about six years old when he wow. said that to me. He was really young. That's so young. And when your kid says that to you, you know, you need help. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's, I'm, I mean, that would be very hard to hear for yeah. sure. And I'm glad it sounds like you guys have a pretty close relationship. Yeah, it, it's been good. We have stuck together through this thick and thin. Yes. Yeah. So what did COVID do to you guys? How did that affect things? 
COVID took him to his absolute worst. I thought we couldn't see any worse. I thought we had been through the worst of it. Um, COVID took him to another place. Right. He, there was so much going in the war, on in the world at that time, and he just couldn't get a break. He was having multiple panic attacks daily. Um, he was nauseous. He was dizzy. He, he just couldn't get a break from it all. And um, there came a point where I knew I needed more help, and I, I was pretty sure I needed to get him to the hospital to get the help he needed. Okay. I was afraid to take him there, though, because of COVID. I was so afraid yeah. that if they didn't let me in, that he would never trust me again. Yeah. So we stuck through it. I, I called our therapist and I said, this is what's going on. I sent her a video clip and she said, he is in crisis. He needs help. Yes. Um, at that time, I reached out to my family doctor and we had to adjust the medications that he was on okay. and add some more medication. Wow. So it took everything that was already there and heightened it. Yep. Big time for yeah. you guys. Wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And what about the back and forth in school, out of school? Did you guys experience that or did you just stay home? How did that work? He was home for almost two years straight. Okay. Um, he missed a lot of school at the best of times with the anxiety. And it was constant trying to reintroduce him. And we were just getting to a place where we felt like we were making some progress and then COVID hit and yeah. he was home. So he was home for almost two years. That's really tough. Yeah. And then to try to get him back in, I mean, what a yep. challenge. Mm -hmm. Now, how has this been on you? Because as mm -hmm. parents, mm -hmm. uh, I'm a parent and I know that when my children are not well, I have, have a hard time. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about your mental health for a moment. How did, how did you manage? It's been hard. Yeah. It, uh, it hurts to see your child hurt. Yes. And you can't do anything about it. Um, I watched his struggles. I watched how hard it was for him. Uh, he missed out on his childhood. Yeah. And it hurts to watch that. So it was difficult. I lost friendships because of it. It was lonely. Yeah. Um, but on the flip side of that, him and I were in this through thick and thin. Well, I think so. you are absolutely amazing. Thank you. We will bring you back. We have to go to commercial break. More when we return. This program is brought to you by Ignite TV. Now you're in command. Visit rogers.com for more details. October 5th, 2014, my daughter was hit by a train. She was walking along the sides of the tracks and it shattered her world. <laughs> Lovely viewers, it's your host of On The Couch, Antoine Al Hashim, reminding you to tune in for every episode of season nine of the longest running and most loved local queer talk show on Rogers TV. Check it out. Watching Rogers TV. Welcome back to Mental Health Matters. I'm your host, Courtney Gideon, and today we are talking about helping our children manage their mental health while returning to school. 
Here to answer our questions and break it all down for us is registered psychotherapist and trauma specialist Jody Walker. Jody, great to have you back on the show. Thank you for having me. Yeah, I always enjoy having you here. You're always such a wealth of knowledge, and this is such an important topic mm -hmm. that we need to discuss. So thank yeah. you for, for coming on to talk about this. So you have always been an advocate for children and mental health and just figuring out ways to help them. Um, let's talk about some of the initiatives you've put into place. Tell everyone at home some of the stuff that you've done. Sure. I've been uh, an advocate for kids long before I was a mother. Yeah. So um, in the 90s, I was manager of the Victim Witness Assistance Program in the courts. Mm -hmm. So that's supporting the most vulnerable populations going through the criminal justice system as victims and witnesses. Oh, wow. And recognizing that the system was not child friendly, okay. I had the incredible opportunity to create the first child friendly courtroom in York Region. Wow. So from there, I love that work so much, I wrote a curriculum on how to prepare kids for testifying in court okay and then uh, at a different time I was a director of a forensic based child abuse center which actually we created a very child friendly approach bringing the systemic response and all the professionals together yes in a very child friendly um, facility so that was really great and then of course as my role as a therapist treating kids who've experienced anxiety depression loss trauma um, helping them uh, understand what's happening um, and, and getting them back to wellness. And through the pandemic, to keep myself busy, yes. I created a couple resources for kids. One was a workbook to help process thoughts and feelings around the pandemic. Yeah. And then I wrote a book called Poppy and the Pandemic, where Poppy and her two cats talked to her about her anxiety, helped her to understand it was anxiety okay. and how to combat that. Wow, that's a lot. That's amazing. Thank you. Well, I mean, on behalf of everybody, thank you for, for doing that work. It's so important. Now, talking about the pandemic a little bit, you wrote the book. You knew this was mm -hmm. not going to be good for kids. What did the pandemic do to our kids? Those kids who never had mental health struggles all of a sudden did. Yeah. And those who had mental health struggles before the pandemic, it got elevated right so we know through research and everyone we know right friends yeah. our friends kids our own kids absolutely they experience anxiety depression substance abuse eating disorders um, exponentially the the kids helpline calls yeah substantially increased hospitalizations for kids mental health increased um, it's been pretty scary to hear and watch firsthand what the pandemic has done to our kids. Did you see a change in your practice through the pandemic? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. And I'm a mom now, and I have a 17-year-old with uh, clinical anxiety. So I, I see it firsthand. I see it amongst her peers. Um, and then, of course, through research and my practice. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So with this being, you know, the pandemic has been really hard on everybody, especially kids over the past couple of years. Now we're heading back into school yeah. and school has changed since the you know pandemic. I hope that the kids get to stay in school because the in and out I don't think is great for them. Yeah. But for those people who are leading up to September feeling really nervous, the parents are nervous, what can we do to help them? Yeah, you know, it's interesting watching um, the politicians and, and the Minister of Education and Health and giving these positive messages of schools returning to normal. Yet <laughs> these things like anxiety, depression, substance use, eating disorders, they don't just flip a switch because, you know, an adult says it's over. Exactly. Right? So um, the expectation as parents and as teachers that kids are just going to kind of let go of the past and move forward, for some, absolutely can and are excited. But for some who are struggling with their mental health, it's not that easy. Right, yeah. yeah. And like you, I really like what you said that just because we say it's over, for these kids who have developed you know, some anxiety disorders, yeah. it's not over for them. Exactly. They're living with this yeah. now. So um, what about the teachers? I mean, they have so much on their plate already. Mm -hmm. So what, for any of the teachers watching, you know, I mean, they might be experiencing their own anxiety going back into school. What can you say to them and what, what would be helpful for them? 
Teachers are probably one of the most under-respected professions during this pandemic, yeah. who they themselves as individuals are living through it themselves, trying to homeschool their own children right. and teach and be online, in class, back and forth, exposed to COVID, their own fears and worries. But uh, we also know that teachers are so instrumental in yes. being a support system for kids. Yes. Some kids don't have a, don't have a strong support system at home. Yeah. Um, and those that even have s strong support systems at home, another trusted adult in the, in the classroom and in the school, they can be instrumental in helping kids navigate their anxieties, helping them find a safe place, helping implement strategies in the daytime when their parents, as we just heard, from Kim, who've been so helpful to her son, can't be there in the in the school. Um, so teachers need amazing um, support and self care as well, because there's so much resting on them, not just as educators, but as support systems to kids and their mental Absolutely. health. Absolutely, yes, they are so important, and I mean, play such a pivotal role in our children's upbringing. Yeah. yeah. Um, for somebody who is not sure if this is anxiety, because I was mentioning to Kim that my stepdaughter had these stomach aches, and we thought it was food related for so long. And then I actually went to school for this, and I thought, this is anxiety, <laughs> right? It was so clear at that point. But what can parents, like, when do they know when to go for help, and what are some of the presenting issues kids have yeah. when they're anxious? Kids. Anxiety presents physiological, right? It's our brain's response to the perception of danger right. in our environment. Yeah. So kids are gonna notice first their body, their tummy aches, their heart flutter, um, and then they're gonna have behaviors that might look like sadness, crying, panic, throwing up, or anger, resistance, um, particularly in the older ones. I was surprised to hear that. Mm -hmm. I didn't know anger was part of it. Yeah, if I'm in this fight or flight mode that you're making me do something that I perceive as dangerous, I'm gonna do everything I can not to go to that scary place. Makes sense, right? yeah. So, um, yeah, it's it can manifest in different ways and your question around how do we know? Yes. The, the biggest flag is, is is this behavior interfering with a child's ability to do kind of their everyday acts of life? Going to school, playing, going to the mall, going to the park, right? If there's things that a child can't do because they feel anxious, sad, mad, then that's a flag that perhaps I should consider taking them to the physician for. Okay. A physician can help like kind of look at signs of anxiety um, or mental health professional. And what have you found has been beneficial in treating kids? Like, is there a specific type of therapy that has been really helpful? So a couple, uh, cognitive behavioral therapy, helping kids understand that thoughts are just thoughts, doesn't make them real. Right. Um, and the other is exposure therapy. Okay. So incrementally exposing them to the thing that they fear the most. Mm -hmm. So if school is the big scary place, imagine every day going to this big scary place. So how can we break that down? Yeah. Can we find a safe room and you can go to that safe room for half a day or two hours of a day. Hmm. Um, this is what we call a hierarchy of exposure that we work with in therapy at the child's um, pace right. to help them understand as they're going through it, how they regulate their thoughts and their body sensations, yes. and then it doesn't feel so scary anymore. That's really great advice. Now you have opened your own clinic, is that yes. right? Tell me a little bit about that. So it's called therapy, um, it's Hummingbird Therapy Clinic. Yes. And I just got so excited there for me. <laughs> Hummingbird Therapy Clinic. And uh, my first initiative in bringing programs to the community is a youth group and children's group for stress, worry, and pandemic anxiety. Wow. So we're hoping to launch that in early October. Um, and we provide support treatment for anxiety, depression, trauma, um, all populations, first responders, okay. kids, um, teachers. Oh, great. Yeah. Oh, that's great. So you offer workshops and private therapy, is that right? So I personally do a number of workshops. I do workshops designed for teachers, yep. helping them uh, understand how anxiety and trauma presents in the classroom and other mental health topics. Wow, that's so great, Jody. We're going to be bringing you back. More Mental Health Matters when we return. That's really great. Yeah, thank you so much. I don't care what the law is. I will never be a slave.
leave. That word, I hate it. It rests on my tongue like rot. Peter, how does it feel to get paid for your work? There are rumors freedom's coming for us all. Freedom, you know that's all I want. Chloe, careful. Vroom men would rather sell you across the river to America than let you go free. Then I'll run. I've run before. Maybe this time for good. No! No! Just get her into the boat! No! Chloe Cooley's resistance led to Canada's first legislation limiting slavery. After 200 years, slavery was abolished in Canada in 1834. Do you worry about how much someone drinks? Do you feel angry or depressed most of the time? Do you feel neglected or unloved? Do you feel that if the drinker loved you, she or he would stop drinking? If you answered yes to any of these questions, you are not alone. Not everyone trapped by alcohol is an alcoholic. Families and friends are suffering too. Al-Anon and Alateen can help. Call 1-866-200-0223 or visit alanon.org slash help. Bipolar disorder. Substance addiction. Bulimia. OCD. Want to swap? One in two, a flip of a coin. That's the same chance we'll experience a mental illness by the time we're 40. A dollar a day can help change those odds. We hope everyone has a safe and happy holiday season. See you in the new year on Gray County Life on Rogers TV. What kind of show do you want to see on Rogers TV? What interests you? Log on to rogerstv.com, fill out a show proposal, and tell us about your segment idea. We want to know what you want to see. Rogers TV, only on Rogers. Welcome back to Mental Health Matters. I'm your host, Courtney Gideon, and today we are talking about helping our children manage their mental health and anxiety while returning to school. We have two amazing guests, registered psychotherapist and trauma specialist Jody Walker and our fabulous parent, Kim Shriloff. Thank you so much both for being here today to you know, tell your journey and your story and to answer our questions, Jody. So Jody, I will start with you. You've heard Kim's story. Any thoughts, questions around what you've heard? I think it's incredible to hear the partnership between Kim and her son yes. in battling anxiety all those years. Um, probably one of the most difficult things as a parent is to not get caught up and be reactive to the behavior they're seeing in front of them okay. and making things worse. You know, hearing and understanding Kim's story that she was able to stay so grounded in her own frustration, sadness, worry, and just be present for her son and help him through those moments all those years to get him to where he is now is quite incredible, Kim. <laughs> I think so too. And I think, you know, you make a great point, Jody, when you talk about that relationship with your child, because I think there's a lot of parents who would react out of their own frustration. And that, I can't imagine, would help. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So, Kim, what is your son up to now? Or, you know, I'm interested to know how he's doing. He's doing very well. We, uh, this month will be one year that he has been in a stable place, I will say almost anxiety free. Wow. Um, he's taken his life back. He's did a full year of high school last year with minimal days off. He's working two summer jobs and we went to African Lion Safari on the weekend because he didn't get to do that when he was a kid. Wow. <laughs> so he's ta he, he keeps telling me, I'm taking back my childhood. <laughs> oh, that's so great. Yeah. Well, that's a really you know, positive, inspiring story. Yes. And how are you doing now with everything? Good. It's, um, we still have a good partnership going. Um, when things started to level out, I was kind of waiting for the bottom to fall out okay. because we had 
had never had a huge period of time where he had done well. Yeah. Um, but I'm in a place now, I've accepted it. We are in a good place, and if the bottom falls out again, we'll pick it back up. Right, exactly. So, but at mm -hmm. least you've known that you've been here, yes. and you can get here again. Exactly. That's amazing. Exactly. Well, good for you. Congratulations Thank to you. everybody. And, um, you know, we, we talk about resilience when we talk about mental health, and I know that's a big part of what you do too, Jody. Can you explain to us why resilience is so important? When I think about resilience, I think of it in two ways. So one is skill-based resilience, how we can learn skills, tools, psychoeducation to strengthen our mental health or physical health or spiritual health, whatever it may be, before a sad, bad, scary thing happens so that uh -huh. I'm stronger going into it. Okay. But there's also adversity-based resilience, meaning I didn't have a choice to go through something uh, horrific as a pandemic mm -hmm. and it was really hard but I've learned things about myself coming out of that and that's adversity based resilience okay okay that's really cool so did you learn anything about yourself Kim going through <laughs> this um, I consider myself to be a fairly patient person yeah. um, but this taught me a whole new level of patience right yeah yeah it took a lot of patience and you know Jody talked about staying calm and things like that it took work though it, yeah. that didn't just come naturally because it is uh, human nature to react to you know bad behaviors and things that are taking place um, I would imagine that there's stay a calm. lot of emotions going on at the same absolutely, time absolutely right absolutely yeah which makes staying calm yes way more difficult yes but you learn very quickly that losing that is not helping him that's not what he needs he needs calm he needs to know that you're there for him no matter what yes well, it sounded like you were a real stabilizing force for him. So I tried to be. You're an amazing mom. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. So, Jody, in terms of your practice now, so if people, you mentioned some of the um, programs that you have and hold there. If people are wanting to get in touch, first of all, what can they expect with your therapy practice, and then how can they get in touch? In terms of what they can expect, they can um, request individual therapy both in person or virtual whatever their comfort is um, the different group treatments that we'll be offering and to reach me there's two ways one is my number if you'd like to give it to me now for me to give it to you sure 289 Three eight three zero three five five, or they can email hummingbirdfrontoffice at gmail.com. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much for coming on and sharing all of this very valuable information as we head into September. And Kim, thank you so much for coming on to share your story and your guys' journey. Congratulations on where you've gotten to. And thank you to you at home for watching. Take care of your mental health. I'm Courtney Gideon. Until next time. the Rogers TV viewer response line. Email us or connect with us on social media. At St. John Ambulance, we're all about community. We teach life-saving skills and provide community support through our volunteer services. All St. John Ambulance product sales and training registrations support these important services. Volunteer, donate, or enroll in a program today so we can continue to have an impact on our community. Visit sja.ca to learn more. At St. John Ambulance, we do more than save lives, we change lives. From coast to coast, all across Canada, there's something very special going on. It's time to show your support. Time to spread the word. Time to demonstrate your commitment to safe and sober driving. 
Join thousands of Canadians and tie a ribbon on something or someone you love. And take the time to have a real conversation about impaired driving. Mad Project Red Ribbon. Tie it, wear it, show it, share it, live it. Find out more at mad.ca. This is Rogers TV. This program is brought to you by Ignite TV. Now you're in command. Visit rogers.com for more details. Welcome to the big land known as Labrador. Dramatic coastlines, sweeping barrens, thick boreal forests, and ancient rock formations. The natural wild beauty of this place surrounds you at every turn. The living landscape is its own wonder, teeming with eagles, moose, caribou, and on the coast, rich marine wildlife. It is in this vast and undulating expanse where there are more lakes and rivers than you can possibly comprehend. There thrives a species of fish that is the holy grail for most anglers. The wondrous native species that is the crown jewel of Canada's waters, the brook trout. Labrador is one of the last best places left in the world to catch wild brook trout that reach truly epic proportions. These are the trout of legend and the compelling reason why I've traveled to Labrador. Come join me on my adventure to this incredible land as I visit one of the oldest and most famous brook trout lodges in Canada, Igloo Lake Lodge. The new fly fisher is supported by Newfoundland and Labrador Outfitters Association, Orvis Fly Fishing, Scientific Anglers, Trout Unlimited. WeatherTech Canada. My journey began at Otter Creek Floatplane Base in Goose Bay. While we had originally planned to leave the base first thing in the morning, Mother Nature threw us our first curveball. Stormy weather delayed our floatplane flight until much later in the afternoon. Despite this setback, we did finally leave, and after a relatively short flight, arrived at Igloo Lake Lodge. Weather delays are part of what you must expect coming to Labrador, like other destinations such as Alaska. The influence of the North Atlantic on this land can be both swift and dramatic. While we didn't have the opportunity to fish this day, we were compensated with a stunning sunset and an opportunity to get set up and prepared for the next day's fishing adventure. It's gonna be hard to sleep tonight, that I can tell you. After a solid sleep, thanks to the fresh air and wonderful dinner the night before, I went to breakfast for coffee and waited to hear what the plan was for my first day of fishing. Just when I thought this fishing adventure couldn't get any better, it did. Lodge owner Steve and Craig Gillingham told me that if I wanted to, we could have a day trip to the famous Eagle River to cast for Atlantic salmon. 
Whoa, what a wonderful surprise and a tremendous way to start my trip. In speaking further with Craig, he told me the lodge was unique because at different times of the year, they could offer flyout day trips for either Atlantic salmon or an opportunity to catch Arctic char. We piled our gear into the float plane and swiftly took off and enjoyed an incredible sightseeing tour from the air. My guide for the day, Craig Gillingham, had me set up my nine weight rod coupled to a large arbor reel with lots of backing. The salmon here can get quite large and they'll definitely run you well into your backing. Craig, so we've just arrived. We're at a special spot here on the Eagle River. Um, and this is one of the great options you offer, Atlantic salmon fishing in addition to the great brook trout fishing. Can you tell me where am I gonna start? Um, I've got a bomber on. Yep. What do you think we should, where do you want me to cast and, and what do you want me to do for a presentation? So Colin, you wanna start a little up here, up towards the, uh, the brook here. You yep. wanna fish all this water area right here. Um, this is the Eagle River right here. Yeah. Uh, Use the salmon hole up right here in the uh, cooler, deeper water right here. Okay, perfect. Key is just methodically work it over. Exactly. Got a nice overcast day, a little bit of rain, but that's actually perfect for salmon. Perfect fishing. salmon had, conditions. I've had yeah. some of my best days on a lousy, rainy, cool day like this, and there's no bugs. No bugs. Right in his kitchen. It's right there, waiting for him. But it's the one that's farther back there is the one that moved. I moved him twice. Yeah. All right, awesome. finally. Good job, Colin. Good stuff. It was riffling through some uh, kind of choppy water. Yep. You get him on the reel here. Oh, Colin is gonna step out here. Try to net them there now. Come on in, come on in, come on in, baby. Come on in, baby. You get them in a little bit farther. Big man. Get the head up, head up, head up, head up. There we go. <laughs> Congratulations. A big male. That's a big male. Let's get the net here. Oh, this is 20 pound plus fish. Easy. Put it down. We'll just, oh, look at that. Beautiful, keep in the water here, and it's ready to go. Several fish rolled on my fly, but none would take it. That's salmon fishing. Despite not having any more success, my first day in the water was truly epic. Any day spent casting to Labrador salmon or trout is definitely a blessing in my opinion. Your mouth can do a lot of amazing things. And your mouth can save a life. Hi, I'm Tom Wong. I'm just one of close to 1,000 Canadians in search of a stem cell match. We need your help. A simple swab is all you need to register on the National Stem Cell Database. You could be the one to save a life. Find the hero in you. Every year, dozens of Canadians are killed or seriously injured because they take risks around railway tracks. Talk to your loved ones about rail safety. Visit stoptracktragedies.ca.
for my third day at the lodge, we decided to visit one of the many back lakes in the area, commonly referred to by locals as ponds. These lakes are relatively shallow and famous for producing large hatches, a match made in heaven while dry fly fishing for brook trout. After a quick boat ride across the main lake and a short walk through the woods, we assembled our gear and headed out into Burton Pond. Got him. Got him. Fish on. Oh, it's a nice fish too. Yes, sir. I can't say how much fun it is to hunt these big brook trout that are all around us here, sipping mayflies. Now we're using a barbless fly, so we minimize the damage. Yes, sir. That we do to this fish. Okay. There he goes. Here's his head is up. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Good job, Colin. <sighs> Beautiful. That was an epic eat. I gotta tell you, we're having some incredible eats. Look at this five weight. Look at that tank. Oh, sweet. Yes, sir. <laughs> this is so incredible. Beautiful brook trout. What's that, three and a half, four? Four, I'd say. Despite the blue skies in the morning, heavy clouds and a threat of rain were in the forecast today. So our original plan of returning to Eagle River was put on hold, and we decided to head back to Burton's Pond for more brook trout fishing on a dry fly. When you can pattern a fish, uh, you see him come up and eat a fly, and if there's a fly in his uh, path, then he'll usually come up and eat that one there. Uh, if you can put your fly in front of the next fly that you think he's going to take, nine times out of ten, he'll come and grab your fly. And then you're going to have some good fun. Right beside going the Going to the right, going to the right. right beside the boat. It doesn't take a second here. I'll, I'll move it. He's going, hey! go! Oh, I... Wow! Yeah, buddy. That was incredible. Just speaking about hunting the fish. We're just speaking about it. So we just all went out here, and I was just changing from my six weight to my five weight, and uh, Travis says, I just saw one come up here. Cast to the right, cast to the right. Okay, got his head up, got his head up. Oh. Nice. <laughs> this is so much fun. That fish. Unfortunately, our day was cut short when a huge front rolled through. We tried to stick it out, but eventually we decided to head home. We made our way back to the lodge and warmed up with a good cup of hot tea with some freshly baked cookies. Heartbeat of Mother Earth, I feel you and embrace your warmth. I see you dancing through the trees. Your song floats on the summer breeze. Community, we come together. We are the voice of our ancestors. Thankful for how much you bless us. Feel the thunder in the drum. All our voices sing as one. Feel the power, feel the pride. Feel the drum beat deep inside. Feel the boom, feel the bass. Let's let go of time and space. 
It'll make you dance, it'll make you sing. Oday we gun, we dok we shin. The drum will lead you, take you far. Always remember who you are. Are you the type who would keep going or stop? It's not easy to stop when you have an addiction. Legalizing cannabis won't stop addiction. It trivializes its consumption. Let's be vigilant. If you need help, visit portage.ca. With clubs, leagues, and courts in every province and territory across Canada, squash is the sport for wall-to-wall -wall fun, fitness, and friendship from coast to coast to coast. Learn to play and you'll want to do it every day. Squash, play inside the box. Hi, I'm David Shearman, host of Politically Speaking. Join me for my next show where my guest will be Kevin Eccles, the new warden of Gray County. Politically Speaking on Rogers TV. Today, my guide, Travis, has taken me out onto the main lake to fish a number of known spots where big brook trout will forage for food. There's no hatches happening, so we'll have to experiment to find what works. So Travis, you got us into the honey hole, as it's commonly known, here at Igloo Lake. And it's referred to as the honey hole for what reason? This is referred to the honey hole because as the summer goes on, the water warms up. There's like a little cold spring comes in here and the trout stack up in here. You can, you, when the water is more clear, you can look out over the boat just like a couple of weeks ago and me and another client, we seen six trout swimming around together. Six biggest kind. But uh, I mean, they, they just really concentrate in here when the water warms up. Oh, just had a grab. Sit. Okay. Oh my goodness. What a place. Lifting it up. Woohoo! Big papa. Whew. Got him. Look at it, fills the net. Look how many fish it. Look at that. Put it down. Go. So you got me throwing this chartreuse uh, rabbit strip with a cone head on it. Yes, sir. What does that look like, do you think, to them? I think it's just a really brightly colored leech, maybe. But uh, where the water's so dirty and uh, is very visible for the fish, mm -hmm. I think that's what uh, really makes them strike. Oh, it. Short little poles. Whoa. Whoa. Nice. That's a trout. Yeah. See the fly line jump. Hang on. Look at him up. Good job. Look at that. Fly popped right out. Pull more of the net. Right, that wasn't there long. After having great success lake fishing in the morning, we decided to switch it up in the afternoon and head down to Joey's Brook, the small stream that flows right behind the lodge. Despite the small size of the stream, I was told there are actually some very big brook trout in the system. That's a nicer fish. That's a nice fish. It is. It's beautiful. Look at the colors. Okay, I'm gonna get a set up. Yep. I'll get them in right away. Oh, wow. Wow! Look how thick that fish is. Look at that. He's got a mark on him. He obviously had a run in with an osprey or something. Yep, trying right not there, to. Yep. It's a male, isn't it? Starting to get a kill. Oh. 
where we wanted to go. Look at that. Yep. It's going to rest. The fishing on the small stream was beyond imagination. The brook trout ranged in size from two to five pounds. Unbelievable. It was surreal fishing for a small stream. By the end of this day, I was exhausted. Exhausted from both the exercise and more probably, the exhilaration of catching so many large brook trout. Think it's too late to become more fit? Think again. I'm personal trainer Karen Ross, specializing in 55 plus fitness. My mission is to help you find your way back to health and wellness. I'll give you the knowledge and the power to take control of your own fitness path. Everyone deserves quality of life for their entire life. Tune in to a little bit fit with me, Karen Ross, right here on Rogers TV. Sometimes. For a wish to come true, it takes a kingdom because together is stronger. Tied tight, united we stand in honor of one child's wish to fuel the fire that will grant many more. Join the kingdom. Just might get a big trout here this morning. Hopefully. <laughs> Wishful thinking, I guess. The water's a little bit more clear here today, too. So I, I, think that, I think the fish are gonna see a lot more easy, you know. Sit. Got him. Get away from the rock. Oh, he's right by that boulder. Okay, he's in. What I did was I was going really slow and giving it twitches. Okay, getting them up, getting them up. What a slob, what a slob. Our hands are wet. I'll take them gently. Here, okay. There he goes. <laughs> Swimming away. Good job, Kong. After that tremendous morning on the main lake, we decided to have lunch and a short nap to recharge. Then we decided to go back to Joey's Brook and cast streamers and mice patterns. It seemed everywhere we fished, the brook trout were aggressive and willing. time. And a nice riffle across there. Oh, 
Nice column. Nice. Oh, it's oh, a, nice it's a fish. salmon. I think that's a salmon, yeah. That is a salmon. Now, this is definitely one I think we're going to have to go ashore for. I think so. Oh, look at that. Yep, I think we're going to have to pull the anchor <laughs> and uh, go ashore. Okay, I'm going to step out. If you don't mind. Good. Good. Okay. Got him. There you go. Holy! There you go. Wow. What is out? Whoa! There you go. Dance. What a beauty, Colin. Beautiful. Just let him break when he's ready. Beautiful fish. The coloration. Just darkening up. Just darkening up. Yep. We're over 40 miles from the ocean. 40 miles from Cartwright. Yep. And there he goes. As I boarded the float plane for the trip back to Goose Bay. I reflected on how truly incredible this week was. Dry fly fishing for rising brook trout of three to six pounds on the back lakes. Casting for massive brook trout on the main lake where fish over 10 pounds have been caught. And then having to deal with the awful situation of only catching a seven pound brute. Then the trout fishing on Joey's Brook. Truly heaven for those of us who love small stream angling. The cherry on this trip was of course, catching some Atlantic salmon, including one large fish that certainly tested my skills. I genuinely hope that everyone watching this will someday have the opportunity to come to Labrador and Igloo Lake to enjoy fishing of this variety and magnitude. There are few places left on this planet that are still untouched and offer fishing and natural beauty like this. To learn more about Igloo Lake, visit our website. Thanks for watching. The new Fly Fisher is supported by Newfoundland and Labrador Outfitters Association, Orvis Fly Fishing, Scientific Anglers, Trout Unlimited, WeatherTech Canada, the Rogers TV viewer response line. Email us or connect with us on social media. Hi, I'm Sharon Skelly, host and community producer of Community Close-Up on Rogers TV. We're back in studio after about two years with some great programming. Join me on Community Close-Up where we meet great people from groups and organizations around Owen Sound and Gray County. And remember, it's your community, so take part. Join us again on Rogers TV or online. Watching hockey just got a power play with NHL Center Ice and Super Sports Pack. With up to 37 out-of-market NHL games a week, you'll always catch your favorite team no matter where you live. Whether it's big matchups you're looking for or following your top fantasy picks, it's all here. NHL Center Ice, part of the Rogers Super Sports Pack. All this for only $35.95 a month. Order through your remote on Channel 450 or call 1-888-ROGERS-1 today. symptom of bladder cancer. Don't ignore this warning sign. 
not even once. 